Wagwag Lids, before we start today's amazing episode of the Have A Word podcast, we need to tell you about our Patreon, which is the biggest Patreon in UK comedy. Yes, it is. Starts from just three quid a month. From just three quid a month, you get an extra episode every single week, exclusive to Patreons, which is up to 90 minutes long. You get 48 hours early access to these public episodes and access to the entire Patreon back catalogue, which goes all the way back to last summer. And the money we make from the Patreon, we put back into the Patreon. We've been making Patreon specials. These are so popular. They include the ghost hunt, the live show. We've got more in the pipeline. But the big ones are the lockdown lock-ins where we got shit-faced in this studio, recorded it all, and turned out some amazing podcasts. They're, they're amazing, the lockdown lock-ins, and we're signing up for it alone. But on top of everything we've already said, you get discounts on merch and early access to live show tickets, which is a big one, because the live Have A Word shows, they sell out almost immediately on Patreon every single time. And on top of that, me and Dan are going on tour, and every time we add a new date, Patreons get access to it first. I'm going on tour from February. Dan's on tour from September next year. You can get tickets for my tour at adamroad.co.uk forward slash shows and Dan's tour at dannightingale.com. Sign up to the Patreon, £3 a month, the best deal in all of UK comedy. I think it's the best deal in worldwide Patreon. That's how far I'd go. Sign up, enjoy the episode. It's going to be a belter. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. What's this? Do, 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 do. Quiz show, isn't it? What is that? What is your least favourite race? Do, do, do. <laughs> do, 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 do. 200 metres. Do, do, do. <laughs> That's not what I meant. He meant ethnicity. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Old Chinese. Fucking. Oh. <laughs> do. do, do, I did do. A, Shout I, out, Chung Ching! I recorded the uh, the Mild High Club yesterday. So if uh, if you into other podcasts, check that out this week when it comes out. It's very, really one of the only other uh, UK podcasts that I can abide. <laughs> <laughs> two the only two one of it. the nicest people. Yep. They're working with us. Yeah. Uh, Dean's great. Yeah. Fucking Amy's great. Dean, yeah. open for me on my work in progress. Oh, I just time. love him. And they've got a good pod. I'm going to do it before Christmas. She did me tarot up. reading. Oh. Right. Amy did me tarot reading. She said... Oh, this is their new feature, <clears throat> isn't it? They do it as like a little Patreon bonus. Oh. And spoiler alert, mine was like the, the best reading she's ever done, she said. Like positive wise. <laughs> no, she actually did say that. Shock. I got like... So I got... Like, she probably didn't. Out that's me, how Adam is it? Out of me six cards, I got four majors, and it's normal that people just get one. And I got two aces, and it's very rare anyone gets even one. You got so, a fl- you got a flush. Yeah. You got like a <laughs> you got a tarot. Yeah. Just Texas Hold'em. Essentially, nice. she does combine it with Cards Against Humanity yeah, as well. Yeah, she does like her own little thing with it. Yeah. But like, it was really <gasps> good. But then Cards Against Humanity. She said something like traveling to India, and I was like, oh, I don't really want to go to India. And you know when you just say something to be funny, but it completely, someone's not expecting it. She went, what's your problem with India? I went, oh, the people. <laughs> <laughs> and I seen it on her own podcast panic. I'm like, oh, we're going to have to cut that out. Uh, no. <laughs> Did it get cut out? No. no. God. They also, they listen. It. It's they jokes. listen. Uh, they listen. Is there any countries you really bucket list want to go to? Or like absolutely don't want? Because I don't want to go to India. Good question that. Oh, I no, I do want to go to India. Me too. But uh, I want to go to Goa, where it's like, hey, fun India. Not like Slumdog Millionaire, like, I got no hands. <laughs> I don't want to say that. Like, you know, a load of, like, Delhi businessmen just ignoring fucking limbless children. <laughs> oh, look. Don't they mutilate them to get more money? Oh, God. I just want to be in Goa. Where I was like, oh, my God, I've taken a pill. That's me. I took a pill in Goa. <laughs> <laughs> I had the shits for 14 days. And when I finally dried up, I had a very sore butt. I'm just saying they mute like kids, don't they? Right, Carl! <laughs> Early doors! We've had a clip go viral. Let's not make it sad straight away. Build up to the evil. Okay. Let's just do racism now and then build up to fucking I just tragedy. Don't, I don't want to have to be in that awkward situation in India where I go to an Indian restaurant, or as they call it, a restaurant, and I have to educate them on why the food is shit compared to our Indian stuff. 
<laughs> same reason I don't really want to go to China. Like, I'd love to go to China in oh, theory, but no. I just know they're not going to do salt and pepper chicken with curry sauce, half chips, half rice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You take, half why chips. Don't you, why, don't you take like a, why don't you take a packed lunch to China? I love it. Hey, lovely wall. Be cold by time I got Fucking great. Got a microwave. Do you have microwaves? <laughs> Fucking hell, you make them, lad. <laughs> Get your kid to knock over a microwave. Stick yeah. that in. Salt and pepper chicken. The wall. Loads of Chinamen. <laughs> Tiananmen Square. Other things Chinese. Great holiday. What about the massacre of Tiananmen Square? Yeah, when that yeah that guy died under a. Are you all right? <laughs> I'm just. Have you not had your meds? <laughs> I, what, if I go to China, he's being the, miserable on purpose, and it's a bit, but it's making me sad. Like the the wall in China sound. I understand why the, the that's what an attraction. The what? The wall. The wall in China. The wall in China. It's got a name on it. Yeah. The wall the big in massive China. massive wall of <laughs> Asia. Uh, You're right. I'm not asked about that. I want to go see the really big you? cat. You know the one that they have a, a copy of in all the chippies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to go and see the big... There's it, a massive one, isn't there, right in, in the in, middle of Beijing? In Tiananmen Square. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. enormous. And like, when the protesters came, it just went, fuck It's off. the Chinese... That's that's, <laughs> the Chinese protesters, they got crushed by the big cat yeah. paw. It's like the Chinese Taj Mahal. That's what it is. Hundred percent. Yeah. It's one. Of, it's like. Is it the fourteenth wonder of the world? <laughs> eighth, isn't it? Oh yeah. Oh eighth. What's the ninth? It isn't. It's only Carl's mask. <laughs> Sorry. That's great. She's a wonderful woman. Yeah, she is. He's She's a an night. asshole. Though. That's fine. She's a wonderful woman. Adam was talking about a buzz. I couldn't say that at full volume because. <laughs> well, because I can't hear you with these headphones on. <laughs> oh yeah, shit! I whispered into a microphone, didn't I? All right, Carl's mask. Looking forward. Yeah, to I just you. feel like you know. If I if I was in India and I was like I'll have a chicken madras please mate garlic naan uh, mushroom mushroom pilaf and he's like my mushroom. friend we don't do that here I'll be like why is he talking that accent why because he spent some time in Toxif <laughs> the red what a win that was then <laughs> he, he, they probably the are the Rajasthan red. Reds yeah they probably L- lad yeah, they probably are a red no nah, they're all United fans aren't they no nah, there's a, 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 a India is very similar to both Wales and Dublin in that it's a good 50-50 split between Liverpool and United fans. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and some shit house that yeah. like City. Yeah. Just yeah I love Man City. Shut yeah. up. <laughs> Shut up. Hang on, there's any Watford fans. Cup to, no. to rebel. <laughs> <laughs> don't do <laughs> What? And why don't you go to India? Just the food. Because it's, a, it's, it's a very cultural, beautiful place, isn't it? It'd be no, amazing. I would go. It would be it's amazing. just not. It's not like near the top of my list. What's at the top of your list? You're sat there in your bocker. Yeah. In your scouse bocker. Yeah. And fucking Steve's in the corner wearing a bocker juniors. Argentina is somewhere that always got me. My mates went travelling after uni. They, I never got this, and I've, I, I, I like live like I don't know. Do a thing that you like. I can I can understand saving up for a bit. But they did shit jobs for nearly two years to have nine, ten months away. They like hated their lives, lived with the parents, and they went around South America because everyone was doing Southeast Asia. They were like, no, we're going to do something different. So they went, uh, they went to LA and whatever, but then went down into Mexico and then got a flight into South America, and they worked their way around uh, it all the way down. Like, is it Chile or Peru? Then Chile. Yeah. And then got to Argentina, spent a couple of weeks in Argentina. They still had sort of like nearly seven weeks of their trip left. So they made their way up Argentina into Brazil. Got to Brazil and were like, "Ah, I'm over it. Changed their plans. Went back to Argentina. They had five weeks that they were meant to be going up through like into northern. They just loved Argentina so much that they went back and went to like a student accommodation and was like, can we rent a flat off you? (laughs) And just... Uh, I don't know how much it would have been, but turned up with tourist money. So they were like, can we rent a flat if you're like $500? The Argentinian like landlord was like, yes. Because <laughs> it was probably like three times what it was. And they just stayed and fucking hung around Buenos Aires, getting fucked up. They love the people. And it's always stuck with me. And as a cocaine user, a lot of the excitement was like, oh, I could go and do that good coke. Now that's gone a little bit. But I, but stuff like the football, the people, the, the culture. The yeah, the head of Yeah, okay, good. good. Yeah, because that's what you do when you give up coke and you get counselling for it. You just try the more addictive, harder drug, isn't it? Like, I'm addicted to something. coke. Yeah, totally. Yeah. A lot of people say fitness. Adam says heroin. Yeah, smart. You do heroin in Argentina. <laughs> 
Um, so I, Argentina's up there in a weird way. It's always I, I, I want to do South America. If I ever do like a, a gap yar, I would do South America. <laughs> a gap yar? A gap yar. Oh, God. A Have you ever done a gap yar? Uh, no, lads. I waited until I was 34. My career was fucking flying. Took a year off. Well, I wouldn't take a year off, but maybe like a month or two. A gap yar for ma- two a, months. A gap yar. A gap yar. No, but I, 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 I like with all this stuff, I don't like where every tourist is. I want to do a... I like the idea of a plan B, you know? So if every cunt's going here... I suppose Goa would probably be that in India, but I like the idea of doing something a little bit... Not hipstery, but just a bit more... Like where you're not just another cunt. Because I think in Argentina, if you turned up as a scouser and you were... If we all went to Boca Juniors, I don't know what they'd do with us. Like, I know Argentina and, and we the know UK have got a weird... And he was he loved it and it was fine. I yeah. think if you turn up in their bocker stuff, they'd be like, These cunts. I, I think you'd have a great time. I know what you mean about the tourist thing though. Like I'd love to go to Brazil, but I don't want to go to touristy Brazil. I wanna go and like have scran in someone's hut in the favela. I wanna turn up and just knock on the door and be like, Come here, me missus, come for tea. Right. Yeah, they wouldn't rob or neither you take anything with me. I mean smart. No, but also, you know. No way to get out of no, mo- the no mobile. You've got lines to Hilton in Rio. Adam could <laughs> <laughs> the, Re- the Rio favelas Adam could fucking burn them down in six weeks please. Oh, I just want to get to know the people and their, their, their struggle the real people right I, I really think we need to do that as a patron special Adam in the favelas be great to have like a game of five aside and see if like I can like sort of play with the Brazilians the next you know? Ronaldinho what the next Ronaldinho yeah. Yeah. is that why they're, they're playing like in the in the favelas like they've no got shoes little on squares they don't have even anything near the size of like a five side pitch and that's why they're so good with close con- co- control also because they play on the beach with no f- shoes on yeah if you also- learn to control a ball with no shoes on once you've got shoes on it's, it's different yeah right mm. it's a well known fact Adam's a huge Brazilian coach back in the 80s yeah he knows that. he knows his stuff doesn't he yeah <laughs> It's going to be upsetting seeing Brazilian children cry when they see your feet, though, isn't it? <laughs> Why? Why? Fucking hell, lad. <laughs> you fucking penguin feet. I just want to be like you, Ronaldinho. <laughs> Adam's feet look like Ronaldinho saying hello. <laughs> fucking hell. Well. Some, some Brazilian. Get your webs on, lad. <laughs> We're just doing South America, yeah? I would like to do South America, but there's there's places I've just got no interest in going to, like whatsoever. Turkmenistan, where's that? <laughs> it's in the stands. It sounds like Turkey. No, it's in the stands. Is it near Turkey? Uz- Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kajikistan. Oh yes, yeah. All those stands where <laughs> you, no one goes. You can't get a visa. They don't even accept visas. You just turn up and they'd be like, "What?" It's like time travel. Yeah. I'm all right with the stands. It'd be good to like go somewhere like that though, just to be different, wouldn't it? Like just go like stag do or like y- y- your your stag, stag do a stag Afghanistan. Stag do a stand. Afghanistan. <laughs> just like what? Yeah. Selfies and that like selfies that no one else has got. Imagine having a selfie that mm. like no one else yeah. has got. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> like <Yeah>. Syria. <laughs> like just a terrorist like, full, one. Full on war kidnapped. zone in the background, just like duck face. <laughs> Damascus with the lads. <laughs> Kabul for Claire's Hindu. <laughs> Try, yeah. The Taliban trying to shut down Claire's Hindu. <laughs> Different types of shots. I want to do Canadian, mate. <laughs> Beautiful. What, four runs. What's that? Four runs. Oh. Yeah, I want to do Canada. Canada? Yeah. Mm. Why? I don't know. It just looks lovely. Like the, the it big looks rivers beautiful. and that that I like the look of and mountains and hills and that yeah. and trees. And it, the people are nice, apparently. Yeah. It just looks like a nice way of living in Canada. All the Canadian comics that I've met bar a couple of cunts have been great. They've made me really love the idea of like there's so many like t- my mate Sean lived in Toronto for a bit, said it was unbelievable. And I'd and like when, who did, fuck, I'm blanking on who we had on from Canada. Bobby Mayer. Bobby Mayer. Glenn Wall. So uh, that is and he, is like, John Hastings. Yeah, and just that, the idea of going out into the, the stick, going north into the, into the sort of, the outback, the bush. Yeah. You know, the Canadian, what do you call it? The bush. The, the great white north. Yeah, the outback. 
The Great White North. I'd love that. Because it's snowy. Right. Not because there's no ethnic diversity then. Where are the places... <laughs> okay. Where are the places you don't want to go? Where's the, like, uh, I'm not asked. The stands, not bothered about India, just in case you have to be like, where's the fucking Boona? I've got, like, absolutely no interest in going to, like, Norway. I'm going to Norway in February. Why? Because <laughs> it's a beautiful country. But it's it's like 11 quid a pint, you know. Okay. I'll just. Oh, well, that's that done. It is, though, isn't it? You don't know that you want to enjoy yourself. You can't enjoy right. yourself when you've just paid fucking oh. five times the going rate for oh, a no. pint of If life. only you weren't on minimum wage podcasting. <laughs> he's, you know, we podcast, but he's on universal credit. <laughs> no, but I don't, mi- I don't mind paying good money for, like, a good product, but it's, like, 11 quid for, like, a Foster's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you'd track. love doing comedy. That was a mate, pr- you would love doing comedy in Norway. If that was, yeah, because I'd be getting paid for it, but I'm not going on holiday there. Same with Dubai. I'm never going back for the trip, but I'll go and do the gigs because they pay me. Oh, fuck. But Dubai like, doesn't bother me either. If that was like a pint of like big wave, like a good, like Ooh. independently produced the jail, then I'd be like, do you know what? I begrudge it, but sound. But 11 quid for a Carlsberg top. Adam is applying. He's never been to Norway. Adam, Adam, so. Adam is applying the same logic that fucking winos apply to pubs. I'm not going some pub when it's four quid a pint. I'm going fucking spoons. He basically wants to travel to the European countries that are the equivalent to the weather spoons. Yeah, I want to go. Oh, Croatia, two euros a fucking bevy. Yeah, like Romania. Buc- is Bucharest in Romania? Romania? Is Bucharest in Romania? Yeah, yes. It's the capital. Yeah. So apparently it's like a, a quid a pint there, but for like good stuff. Right, because the, but you're it, in Romania. Yeah, I know. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Is it a Hungary? That's, oh, that's Budapest. Sophia. Budapest, sorry. Sophia yeah. and Bud- oh, no, Please. Sophia's Bulgaria. Yeah. Very similar name. Oh, All bitch. these places, yeah, there's poverty. Yeah, there's early death. But as a result of that, you get cheap ale. Right. And that makes them a holiday destination. Right. So if that's what we're going off, let's get, you know, where's the real shitholes? Let's get into the middle of how much is a pint in Rwanda? It's going to be a cheap Rwandan pint, isn't it? Yeah. Adam, where's he going? Where's Iceland was expensive for the pint. Oh, fuck Iceland, 15 quid and all that health and life expectancy. <laughs> nah. Adam's drinking with the Tootsies in fucking Rwanda. Child soldiers <laughs> like, Adam, Adam, are you having a good time in Rwanda? It is 20p, a pint of lager. Cheers, oh my lad. God, a villager. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, would you like to shoot a villager? <laughs> That's 40p. <laughs> Bastard. Like yeah, it. yeah. Cheers. Three more. <laughs> fucking. 15 quid a pint in fucking Iceland. What, to see the Milky Way? Fuck off, mate. I got the fucking illuminations the in black. Huh? Milky Way. The Aurora Borealis. Is it not called the Milky Way? It's not. No way, Northern, Northern Lights. Ah, shit. I was ro- I was on such a great roll. I reckon My that- Rwandan child soldier was vintage me. I reckon Go that's probably overrated self. as well. Whoa. People bang on about the Northern Lights. No. I've seen pictures of it. I don't know how much better it can be in person. I saw about the Milky Way, though. <laughs> so if you see the Milky Way, you smashed it because you are far from home. Oh, hell out. I'll pay 20 quid a pint for this. <laughs> Mil- Milky Way. The Northern, the Northern Lights are fantastic. In what way? Because it's something, it's it's such an insane spectacle that you're never going to see anywhere else. I've seen it on Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no different, though, is it? It looks the same. All right, what about going to the match? What do you mean? Same as watching it on the telly. No. Why? Because of the atmosphere. Oh, There's not like 50,000 people at the Northern Lights all cheering. No, like, there is. Northern Lights. Do, 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 Northern Lights. Do, do, do. Is that what they sing in Liverpool? Liverpool. <laughs> Liverpool. Do, 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 Liverpool. Few tourists in tonight. Liverpool. Do, 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 do. Play the goals in the goal. Red, red. I like this town and the players with their legs. <laughs> Liverpool. Do, do, do. Score a goal and win the league and all the cups. Do, do, do. <laughs> I love those chants. Anfield's a special night on a Champions League match. We ain't foreigners and kicking them with balls. Hey, do, 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 do. Score a goal. Liverpool. I Milky know. Way. 50,000 people at the Milky Way. That'd be a, it's great. the Northern Lights. Oh, shit, yes. No. Yeah, that'd be an away day out the galaxy. What can I just say? Can I, I've got this in my head, the Milky Way thing. What the fuck is the Milky Way? Oh, Why am I being our an galaxy? Our galaxy. Well, you are in the Milky Way. You're sat on the Milky Way right yeah, now. Yeah, so I can see it. Yeah, yeah. So it's valid. <laughs> yeah. Why is that in my head? No, but like a hundred of us drove into the darkness at midnight. Yeah. And sat under the stars in the snow. 
and watch the and watch the Nor- uh, Northern Lights. Right, a hundred people. It was like three coaches. Right, a hundred of you, all not together, just to- so that's just not tourists. Like Liverpool. That's not like a Champions yeah. League night. That's like going to watch fucking Salford FC, isn't it? In in like the fucking third round of the FA Cup. Yeah, it's just like that. It was fifty. Did you say that when you looked at the? And yeah, Lights, I'd rather watch that on the telly than be there. You're chatting shit. Salford City in the third round of the FA Cup. You think I'd go? No. That game? <laughs> Can I just ask how much is a pint of the Northern Lights? Wow. How much is a pint? We'll try and get. If right. it's any more than six quid, I'm not interested. Five ninety five. <laughs> there you go. And this Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> It's beautiful. It's incredible. It's, it's indescribable. What's the Ow. food like? You take a little picnic. <laughs> oh my god! And butties. Lovely. It's tuna mayo. Oh. oh. <laughs> no. Way. I, I just I, I think there's a you lot get a little of chocolate bar. And it there's is. a lot of sights Guess what it around is? the world. It's a toffee crisp. <laughs> there's a lot of sights around the world where I'm just like, I don't get like if you can, when people are taking pictures. I understand people taking pictures like that they're in. Like a selfie or getting like you and your missus. Oh, I understand that. I know what you but mean. Like someone going to the Taj Mahal and with their iPhone taking a photo as if that's going to be better than anything on Google. I agree with that. I also Absolutely. don't know why why you need to see it in real life in person. What's the point? Oh, great. A big building. Would you There's like loads to... of buildings all over the world. What about Christ the Redeemer? Would you like to see that? Yeah. Why? On Google. Oh, you wouldn't like to go and see I'm it? I'm not asked. What's yeah, the point? Unless I can it. climb it and sit on them. You basically want to live <laughs> in West Derby, pod in Runcorn, go gig in Google. Liverpool, and see the world via Google. Where have you been today, Adam? I scratch my dick and balls while looking at the Taj Mahal. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Good life that's going to be. I, 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 I would get no more out of being at the Taj Mahal as I do from ordering from the Indian restaurant called the Taj Mahal in town. Yeah, but it's £2 a pint at the Taj Mahal. <laughs> <laughs> Worth thinking about. Is there no like site that you'd like to go and see? No, none. Not, not that I can think of at the top of my head. Like no. what? What? Like what? Niagara Falls, Machu Picchu. Niagara Falls, I, I think is different because <laughs> at least it's moving. <laughs> the Taj so you Ma- want to see the Taj Mahal fall down? No. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. But if I'd the, get out of the ticket for that, pay eight quid a pint for but that. If the Taj Mahal was on like a spinning place and it did like circles, you can't take a picture of that. That'd be different. The deal. You know what I mean? But I don't want to have to walk around the back of it to see the back of it. Just show the back of it to me and I'll stay here. Good. Niagara Falls. <laughs> like, it's the noise. Like, the noise, the noise is part of that experience, right, isn't it? Because yeah, the yeah. water's falling. Taj Mahal's silent. You can yeah, see it. No, but the Taj Mahal isn't silent, but all you can hear is fucking people nearly getting run over behind you. <laughs> like, that's... That, like, what about Machu Picchu? Would you like to go there? What is that? It's a like a, a hidden, forbidden, not forbidden, hidden, hidden forbidden, <laughs> in Peru. rat ridden, like a hidden civilization in like on a mountain in Peru. It takes like a week to get there. Yeah, <laughs> takes a week to get it's there. Beautiful. It's like one of the you one put of the most. It on inc- there. Yeah, it's on look. one of the most incredible places on planet Earth. He's not gonna like, like it, is he? No. He's not gonna. He's not gonna see it and go. Oh, actually, fucking beautiful. Right, I do like it. Looks gorgeous. But now that I've seen this, I feel like I've been. Where's the bar? <laughs> There's a Weatherspoon's back left. <laughs> Steve Harris pooed his pants on the way down from Machu Picchu, didn't he? He got like a weird book because he's been... fucks your body up, Machu doesn't Poo-poo. it? Machu poo poo. Yeah, he... Machu poo poo. He matched a pee-pee. It fucks your body up, doesn't it? Could do a great gig there in the middle. Look at that tiered seating. <laughs> Adam will do Machu Picchu if he can do a one-man show. <laughs> Who's supporting Steve Harris? Right, look at that girl's selfie. Why? That is the worst picture of all of them. Yeah, but Why... You don't want to visit Machu Picchu, she said. She looks tired there. I'm talking a week to get there. She's, she's, just, seen, she's just seen Steve Harris shit himself, <laughs> that's why. Do us a favour, Finn. Google the seven wonders of the world and let's see what Adam's opinion is on all of these places and whether he would visit. I think... Oh. Right. Here we are. Where's Carl's mom? Oh, no, that's she's nine. No, go on it. Go on a, on a thingy. We're just, we uh, we're so, just Googling seven yeah, wonders of the world. It. Right. The Great Wall of China. Great Wall of China. Right. Incredible. Only thing visible man made from space. Uh, for now. For now. Yeah, we'll, get, we'll get there with something else eventually. Yeah, wait till they see our new so studio. What's, it, like, what's that? That's in Mexico. That lo- that could be in Crocky Park and I would walk past it every day. <laughs> so this You'd is, walk uh, past an Inca, an Inca pyramid every every day in Crocky Park and be like, oh yeah, that's the old Scouse Incas. Like if it was there, like I'd probably never even bother taking a picture near it. 
Right. Like, no. There's a hill in Crocky Park that doesn't look dissimilar to that. Do you know the one I mean? With the little the bomb shelter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You should ride that bike, down. It's, it's very similar. I'm it's not asking that either. The bomb shelter from 50, 60, 70 years ago. Yeah, probably, yeah. <clears throat> That's from like 8,000 years ago. Oh, so because it's old. No, no, it's better. not 8,000 years ago, is it? When were the Aztecs? Ninth, ninth century. Oh, no, it's not that. Oh, yeah, it's shite then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go Crocky Park. Next one, Petra. What? Have they done that? What How do you mean, have they done that? It's in a mountain. It's in a. It's in is rock. that in Egypt? Uh, Petra is in Jordan. Jordan. Right. It what just looks like the. T- like, just go to the library in town. What do you think, Adam? That's is that meant to be complicated? It's made in the side of a big rock. Yeah, probably talked about the while. audio listener. If you could Google Petra and look at it, beautiful. What a, what what a lovely. Like you, how do you even do? They can do that now. I mean, give anyone enough time and they could do it. Right, Petra's off the off the list. Next, Machu Picchu. Or did he done that? Or he's already been there. Christ the Redeemer. Like, be... Why is that a wonder? It's just a fucking statue, isn't it? We've got one of Bill Shankly outside Anfield. That's just a bit bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's not on a hill. <laughs> yeah. Right. Plus, that's Christ and not like a Liverpool manager. Is it, and Any that? difference? That uh, doesn't even look finished. Coliseum. Doesn't look finished. Doesn't look... It's bigger on the left than it is on the right. Why? It's the, it's the main stand, isn't it? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, it's like St. James's Park. <laughs> they didn't get planning permissions on the right. There's um, <laughs> student flats on the right. So, Coliseum? Yeah? No? He's just going to say no to all of them, though, isn't he? he it's, not it. it's not that I'm going to say no to all of them. Like, I I don't get what, what would be different about being there than looking at it like we are now. <laughs> what <laughs> yeah. a retarded person. That's just Taj Mahal. That's not even as good as Wasn't the Wasn't it built for his wife? Bill. Built for his wife as a gift? I don't know anything about the Taj Mahal. Yeah. What's the menu like? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it? Yeah. That is no better than the Cathedral in Liverpool. The Taj Mahal. Well, you'll never know because you're not going. Isn't it made of marble? I don't. That, that means nothing to me. Interesting. It's marble harder to make stuff out of than bricks. It's heavier, isn't it? Harder to cut and move. More expensive. Yeah. Difficult to source. Just think it's a it's a it's, it's a beautiful place. What about it? the water park in Tenerife? Yeah. Because <laughs> it's an activity. <laughs> if they put a slide around the Taj Mahal, then sand. <laughs> not it. Adam's TripAdvisor review of all places. <laughs> Auschwitz. Where's the fucking pools? Got to have a nice swim pool there. Yeah. Let's be careful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, n- what places wouldn't be improved by a water slide? There isn't a single place on the planet apart from water parks that already have them. <laughs> what you said a water park wouldn't be improved by an extra slide? <laughs> I think they. I think they think about it. Yeah, I suppose so. The large had drunk collider. Oh, that'd be amazing! You get to go through it. Yeah, they're trying to they're trying to replicate the Big Bang, and then there's Adam in his fucking speedos, like Wee! you go through it and you come out before you actually went in. <laughs> <laughs> so that'd be the best one because you'd get a full day at a water park and you'd no time spent. <laughs> so you'd have the experience and like, the memories of being in a water park, but you'd just be like, oh, still Tuesday. Still crack on. Yeah, fast pass is a nightmare. You just keep <laughs> looping round in time. Where's Adam? He's uh, been at a water park for 180 years. But imagine if that Taj Mahal yesterday. just had a, a really big fucking slide going round it. And you come through like a dragon's head a, at the end. Is it a see-through slide so you can see the building? Makes no difference. No, to me, no, you see you the building, then you get on the slide. No one's like, that. I want to see the Taj Mahal, but while I'm moving quickly down a slide. Right. How would you say. improve Price the Redeemer? What would you do to that? Oh my God, that's the best slide. Yeah. You literally know. climb up Jesus and you get in the slide over his fucking I actually think nose. the way to improve Christ the Redeemer is to put a swing on each arm. Yeah, like a black pearl, like the big catapult one. And ones. then get him to spin and then have him spin. Yeah. So we're adding a, we're adding a slide to Taj Mahal. <laughs> we'll be adding to the Coliseum to improve that. Uh, we've done that, haven't we? Water Park, remember? Yeah. Water Park. Um, Machu Picchu. What are you doing to improve Hide and that? seek. Make it a hide and seek adventure day. Yeah, or or, yeah, or paintball. It does look pretty good on everyone's the got oxygen paintball deprivation. And, yes. Paintball in Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu paintballing. Machu paintballing. Machu Picchu. Okay. Make it a paintball and adventure park. What about Petra? Make oh. it a library. Look shit. Make it a library. Looks like a library. Right. Did you need that in Mexico? Uh you doing there? I mean that's lovely for the slide, you know, a kid's slide. Yeah, that's a kid's slide. Get that in Crocky Park. Um Great Wall of China. Um, log flume. Get it water. Get a log. 
<laughs> Fucking, there you go. It's yeah, because like there is actually like a, a gradient on that, isn't there? So that could be like, that could be like a lazy river. Lazy river. river. <gasps> Unbelievable. The lazy river. You the lazy river. Of, the, the great lazy river of China. That'd that be would good. be an improvement. He's, 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 he's right there. You could have a fucking little bottle of Tiger, a little Xing Tao, just floating along. Little Xing Tao, yeah. Nice. Right, there, there you, you go. go. We've, we've improved all the great wonders of the world with many activities. <laughs> this is why knobheads like us aren't in charge of anything. <laughs> <laughs> Tourism would go up. Yeah. 100%. Put a zoo in the Coliseum. Shocker. There you go. And they used to have lions in it when they used to fight them and that. Glad they used to face animals, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet that was a fucking great ticket. Do you think they did season tickets for that? Like in Rome, they're like, lad, you go in the game. Like, <laughs> fucking yes. And they got a spare for Saturday. Yeah, uh, yeah. Is it Gladiators tonight? Oh no, fucking hell, it's midweek. It's Christians. Yes, mate. <laughs> I've got an acker on. <laughs> I've got two Christians and a Jesuit to get eaten by a lion before half time. <laughs> fucking hell, seven to one, lad. Get on me. Be fucking brilliant. You bet the over or the under on the limbs. Lad. <laughs> got great news. Can you get down the Coliseum tonight? My brother can't go. I got a ticket for you. Can have a season ticket. <laughs> Amazing. How much is a pint though? I don't even like back well, then. It was back cheap as fuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Little penny. You'd have your slave to go and get it for you. Be fucking brilliant. A little penny. Barry. Barry the slave. Barry. The Barry. Slave. Come here. All right. Pint. Hurry up. I don't even have to say please. It'd be fucking brilliant. Here's your penny. I'd love a slave called Barry. Do you want a PA in, in, eventually? <clears throat> slave. Personal assistant. You can't call them slaves anymore. I'd love to get so big that I could employ Barry Dodds, my friend, and come here and be like, Baz, look, I know you're doing all right. Patreon's doing well. Barry's got great Patreon. If we get rich enough, we'll shit all over it. But I'm going to give you 50 grand a year, 60 grand a year, and you can just go, Barry! No, um, I would love a PA like just to like do all my emails for me, make me coffee. Here you go, lad, and I'd treat them so well. They'd be the like well looked after PA. Of all time. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't even look at them. What? You wouldn't even look at them. I would. I'd give them a little wink, now. That's them so well looked after. Thank you. <laughs> You'd treat Please. them so well. <laughs> yeah. Do us a favor, like well, you need to get a shackle. Have another one of them. Nice one. What? So lovely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. Take out the company account. Wow, so your, come back. your projection of the boss that you think you're going to be is, I don't, I'm not sure it's accurate. I'm a really reasonable guy. Uh, for a, P, a PA, you think you're going to be fucking, I think you're quite. As long as they do exactly what they're told when they're told, then <laughs> everything will be fine. I mean, you could call it a slave, it's basically. Yeah. Wiping my arse is getting tedious. Barry! I do want to bomb my wiper at some point. Right. That probably wouldn't be the PA's job that they'd probably draw the line there. I'd have to get like someone else in for that. A separate bum wiper. Specialist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Liam a, speci- a bum wiper. Yeah. Try and put that on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, but if you paid well, anyone will do anything for anything. Right. And I think some people do have a, a line there. 50, 50 grand a year to wipe Adam's ass. they would be queuing around the block. <laughs> wouldn't they? Yeah. You could get an intern. Yeah. We'll give someone a week and then we'll see what they're like. Roles include making a tea and coffee, welcoming the guests to the studio, and wiping my asshole whenever I explode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. 50 grand a year. A PA would be nice, wouldn't it? Like, I just, uh, there's loads of jobs. Yeah, cancel all me meetings, Julie. I just want to be able to say that to someone. I thought I was going to cancel them. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't got any? Cancel them. <laughs> okay. Put some meetings in Cle- and then cancel them. <laughs> Clear my afternoon. I've got stuff. I'm gonna. I want to play golf with the president of <laughs> president of <laughs> president of the United States. Right. Wow. Big one. Coming around West Derby, is he? <laughs> big Joey. Could do. Yeah. West Derby golf course is actually a good one. Oh my God! Can we just recommend <laughs> Shane Gillis's special on YouTube? Yeah. Just mentioning the president. Adam came in and went, "Mate, you've got to watch Shane Gillis's special." And I sometimes I'm a bit like, "Oh, when we get in here, I want to get on." Watching that for 15 minutes was such a great yeah. touch before the podcast. <laughs> so um, do you want to give, tell them what it is and where it is? Just go, just go on YouTube and put Shane Gillis special. It's the, the full-length special. I think it's 48 minutes long, but it, it's just fucking fire. It's great. Just go and watch we it. We sat here and lolled hard. The President Trump bit like, yeah. is such a non-hack Trump routine. Fuck me. It's so funny. So well done. Go and enjoy that. Uh, should we put the link in the in the notes? Yeah, go on. Why not? All right, let's have a little break. 
Adam, get off your phone. We're going to do a Manscaped ad. I'm reading what they want us to say. All right, we'll crack on. Hello, ho, 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 gentlemen. The holiday season is upon us. And this week's episode, like many others, is brought to you by our partners at Manscaped. Dot com. They've just released a body wash and a shampoo that goes on top of the Performance Package 4.0, including the lawnmower. This is the best in below-the-belt grooming for men worldwide. And with this podcast, you get a bit of discount and free shipping worldwide with the promo code WORD20. They do. <laughs> they do. Dan's a great man. help with that bit. You shave your balls, your missus will smoke at a pipe with the face a little bit more often. And she could use it to trim the pump pum She can. And there's the weed whacker. You can shove that up your nose. You won't have hairy nose or ear strolls anymore. And her ass. And her asshole. Shave her <laughs> asshole. Shave everything you can possibly find hair on in your house. Shave the cat. You can do whatever you want with the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0. And you'll get 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the promo code WORD20. In all seriousness, these products are the absolute dogs shaving bollocks. And they make a perfect Christmas present. Quality. So go and get yourself some stuff right now and enjoy the rest of the episode. Peace. And we are recording. I fucking mean it. You better have some fucking questions prepared this week. I do. Are they good? God, that was horrible, that. That was a really nasty tone, and we're trying to have fun here, aren't we? You okay, Dan? I'm going to cry. I'm just going to cry. Stop being a bitch. <laughs> Milk away. Bitch. Milk away. Could you do an impression of a caveman? Hey, uh, hey, uh, hey. Uh, 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 Lad. That's nice. That's nice at the museum, isn't it? Huh? That's nice at the museum. Gum, gum, give me gum, gum. That's at Easter Island, Dad. That's yeah, what Sam Where, Why have you asked that? for that? What? Because I just couldn't speak. Shh, you just wanted to throw it, see if I could do it. I like impressions. Uh, 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 uh. What about Kevin Spacey? Can you do Kevin Spacey? Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I can do Kevin Spacey playing a rapey caveman. Go on then. I think all cavemen were rapey, actually. Wasn't rape, though, was it? <laughs> Legally, no. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Um, so. Jack Nicholson. <laughs> um, Jack Nicholson. Eat breakfast 3,000 yards away from 2,000 Cubans who are trying to kill him. You can't do impressions. You can just do quotes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. That wasn't bad, though. Wasn't now do bad. Jack Nicholson as a rapey caveman. Hey, get over here and I'll fuck you in the ass against your will. Oh, no, no, you don't just do quotes. You can ad lib. <laughs> can you rape a cave woman? I don't think you can. You're in a uh, rambunctious <laughs> mood over there, Carl. <laughs> Give me something else. I'll, I'll All right, let's do whatever you want. <laughs> I'll just keep going. Keep going. What kind of rapist do you want? <laughs> Throw a celebrity rapist at me. I'll do it. But well, obviously a gay rapist because you know. Jack Nicholson has not been accused of anything. No, but that's what we were doing, wasn't it? Cristiano Ronaldo. Oh my God, Carl! Naughty mood. <laughs> Chat. No, no. <laughs> Upset me, nasty. Producer. I can do Chabby Alonso. <laughs> Famous impression. Ever knows what he sounds like? You, do, do you actually want to do the caveman? Or are you just doing? The, you just want to do your impressions? To do impressions? Oh, he just wants to do his impressions. <laughs> Ladies and gents, it's Adam's impressions. Stevie, pass me the ball. So, no, I'm, I'm sorry. The, the crowd was so excited they cheered over it slightly. Stevie, oh, pass me the ball. I'm Chapin Alonso. Wow, halfway down goal. It's Chinese. <laughs> just getting in the bath. <laughs> wow. Oh. Halfway round goal. Oh, yeah, he is Japanese. Oh my god, I'm Al Pacino. I'm playing at Luton. <laughs> I'm playing at Luton, and a goalkeeper is oh, off his line. Kieran Dyer. What? Kieran Dyer. <laughs> Go on. I'm doing it. I'm just sat on the bench. <laughs> nice. Nice. That was really good, that. That was a good joke. Fast. <laughs> the speed. Al Pacino, I can do Al Pacino. I know you can do Al Pacino. <laughs> oh, oh, God. <laughs> this uh, bath water is really this? hot. <laughs> you got to get your bath. You got your head all the way up. The bubbles. The bubbly. Oh, ah. Can you do quiet Al Pacino? Just out of interest. Yeah. That yeah, <laughs> was Elvis. <laughs> I can do Elvis if you want. Go uh -huh. on. Uh -huh. 
Was it called Elvis? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Do you not know an Elvis song? I think you might be singing in Liverpool chants. Oh, scored a goal. Oh, the Reds are playing forty. Oh, I'm all Salah, I'm all Salah. Or all on and down the wing. <laughs> Wow. Elvis is a red. <laughs> Elvis is a red. Elvis is his red. And he's big, fat, and dead. Uh, I can do a New York Jew. Always oh, sounds aggressive, by the way. You land Jew. Super aggressive. You really lean on the you never, Jew. You never, you never go Jew. I got an audition for you. Right. Tell me that's not fucking perfect. Stunning. Stunning. <laughs> Jew. You really land the Jew. You really lean in. What's wrong with that? You never say in a, 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 like a New York Jewish person, like Jew. Whoever says that, I don't know. <laughs> a New York Jewish person, Jewy New Yorker. Yeah, a Jew Yorker. <laughs> that's the, that's it's the fine being racist directing. when they're that far away, isn't it? <laughs> I don't give a shit. Fucking miles away. <laughs> Fucking miles away. Can see what a word Ray Winston. Jews can do. Ray Winston. Everyone can. Yeah. Ah. Wow. <laughs> Bet three six five. <laughs> ah. What to say in there? Is that what? like asking to put the kettle on? It's when he's lost his bet. Ah. Ah. He never loses though, does he? Fucking, I put 12 corners on. Fucking 13 there. Nah. It's only the first half. You better come ah. in. Do you know who Ray Winston is? <laughs> <laughs> I was betting. Do you know what I realised? I realised when I was watching, I saw that Idris Elba bit, like, you naughty little cunt. <laughs> my Idris Elba is my Ray Winston. Yeah. <laughs> I've got, I've got any others? I feel like you you need to cleanse yourself of these. Like they're flowing through you. Can I just say my favourite so Joe far? Pesci. No, my favourite so far was <laughs> Javi Alonso because all your others, all your other impressions are impressions that every other cunt has tried to do over time. No one's gone. You want to see my Javi Alonso? <laughs> Steven, Steven, I pass the ball to feet. Steven, pinpoint accuracy. <laughs> Ludicrous. Uh, I can't, I don't know. I'm not good at that one. You can do it, but you're not good at it. I should, uh, yeah. Gary Barlow. Gary Barlow. <laughs> <laughs> no, not doing ludicrous. That's fucking stupid. It's ludicrous. Not doing it. Gary Barlow. <laughs> What's your Gary Barlow? Oh, God. <laughs> Dad, take that. Do, 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 do. Can't remember any take that song. Oh, uh -huh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're Gary Barlow doing an Elvis tribute. Spot on. Can you do Mo Salah? Have I never heard him speak? Yeah. Um. <laughs> it's hard because he absolutely adores the man. I, I can't remember what he talks like. An Egyptian. Yeah. <laughs> Hieroglyphics. Just, for the Did audio he... listener, Adam just walked like an Egyptian. <laughs> oh, I fucking get on that goal there. Oh, God. <laughs> Over there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Egyptian, me, love. <laughs> Fucking love a pyramid. Should see. The one in Crocky Parks, they're my favourite. Built by the ancient Egyptians or Crockies, I don't know. <laughs> the ancient Crockies. The ancient Crockies. That's where Jamie Carmoon came from. Ah, <laughs> <coughs> uh, any questions? All right, lads, need a bit of advice. So I find myself in a weird situation in a minute and could do with some advice. This is uh, The email was titled, Help a Girl Out. Just got out of a three-year relationship. We never lived together, and I didn't really acknowledge it wasn't working until he broke up with me. Now, don't get me wrong, I was upset at first, but quickly started to feel like it was for the best. Now, I've not thought, um, thought to fix things like I normally would, but he keeps messaging me, ringing, and the latest turn of events is him turning up at my house, even though I've made it clear that he was right and we are over. I don't want to be an arsehole about the situation, but how would you guys handle an ex that won't take no for an answer? Thanks, guys. Love the pod. It's from Anonymous. Lady Anon. Answer the door cover than your own shit and try and kiss him. Next question. <laughs> Say no in a different language. I know. Nine. My ex-girlfriend uh, was telling me about her first boyfriend that she'd been with since like school all through college and they were together four or five years and he was a bit of a knob and she, they, they broke up and she went off to uni 
and he just kept pestering her, kept pestering her, and Sorton hadn't accepted that it was over, but they had split up. And I th- I don't know if he was abusive, but she was a bit scared of him. Yeah. When she talked about him, I was like, this, this was a bad dude. And she'd also had a bit of a sad childhood where her dad was a bit much as well. So she, she didn't just sort of go, what the fuck are you doing? Leave me alone. She sort of weirdly like cowered and let him in. And she decided to put an end to it. And she did it brilliantly. He was racist, the boyfriend. So while she was at uni, she fucked an Asian guy. and In front of him? Not in front of him. And just told him. Based and on. he never pestered her again. That was the end. In his head, he was like... That is phenomenal commitment to get rid of your fella. No, but there was... It, don't get me wrong. She didn't just be like, right, I'm going to Taj Mahal for tea. And what... <laughs> And one of these waiters is getting noshed off next to the fucking onion barges. She, I think maybe <laughs> she didn't just get on Just Eat and go, right, I'll have a fucking chicken tikka boona and someone's getting a hand job on the doorstep. Yeah, have you got a tip? I've got a fucking brilliant tip, mate. Get on that. Take this selfie. She, there was an Asian guy at uni who she fancied, who she had right. a bit of a thing for. So she was like, apparently she just turned up and was like, do you, she turned up and was like wearing something sexy and was like, I'd like to stay over. And this guy was like, okay. <laughs> and then the next day, when, bu- when ex-boyfriend, I, thought, I think that guy was just fine. She was fucking hot. And when the next day, when ex-boyfriend was like, hi, hey, you all right? What you been up to? She was like, oh, just, you know. Shagging Asians. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, verbatim. <laughs> all right, what you been up to? How's your yeah. mum? Been shagging Asians, mum's all right. I got the full pickle tray. <laughs> Woof. So, he to be fair, she, she was, <laughs> he, he, he yogurted my mint. Um, Logan Josh. So I maybe use one of his things against him. That was the first thing I saw this email and just thought of her. She was bananas as much as I loved her. Yeah, maybe but this guy's not fair, rave it. Maybe he's not racist. Maybe he's homophobic. Go and shag a gay guy. Clever. Clever. As well. Clever. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how you're going to... What are you going to do? Turn up dressed as a lad. Yeah. Find out what's his least favourite pet and get one. Might be scared of the sharks. <laughs> That's, wow. There's a real gear down on that one. Yeah. Like on Friends, when, she gets a, when he gets a spider yeah. to scare Rachel off and she loves her. Get like oh a deadly snake. Oh. And let it loose. Do you know, we walked past, when we were doing the last dance, we walked past a big reptile shop. Just fucking creeps me out. I know people yeah. love it. But I just don't, I just don't get it. You don't like yeah, if I was single and I was on like Tinder or something and there was a girl with like a lizard, like I'd still swipe right because she definitely takes it in the ass. But after that, I wouldn't want to be with her. Yeah. Dominic Clare says, all right. <laughs> no, I'm going to, I'm going to link this up. Don, Dominic Clare says, all right, uh, lads. A lass in our friendship group was talking about her icks with lads. I hate things that word. About, do you? Why? Yeah, it's fucking ruined by gobshites on Twitter. Oh, we fell over, not the ick. Fuck off. He doesn't even like you. I hate it so much. Oh my God, he stole this car. I've got the ache. Right. Bye. Next question. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, one of her examples was, Carl, you're going to hate this okay, so much. It's so good. I am as well. I'm with Carl. On About that. her icks with lads. One of her examples was when they wear football tops out in public. <laughs> so Good. I don't want to know you, you <laughs> fucking fat bitch. <laughs> He is in a fucking spicy mood. One of them moods, isn't he? He is, listen, spicy rice. Regla tonight. I I, I feel like I'm in the middle of this, and you're sort of in the middle of it, because I've got a feeling she means, like, the local team, because this is going to be a scouser. Oh, I agree with that. Yeah. If, like, a fella wearing an Everton top to the pub. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Fuck him right (laughs) off. Hey, do you know what? The best thing is... She, it's Dominic Clare that's emailed in. She doesn't even know that she's part of it. Like, fuck you, you fat bitch. <laughs> All right, yeah, no, but she's winning me over, actually. If it's the local team, that is a bit noncy. Yeah. Because you were telling me you wouldn't even wear, uh, you wouldn't wear a Liverpool top to the game. Because no. it's a bit like oh. Danish family on. I will wear a Liverpool top to play in house, a game or of football. Or in your house, if you're watching the game. Not even really then. I wore it when we won the league because I was pissed and I was like, I'm putting my fucking top on. Oh, uh, such a good night, and and then I you went can't to the you can't wear. I would if I wore Everton top to the pub, I'd kill myself. <laughs> I'd, it's just no. 
No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just not the done thing. No. Would you ever wear an Everton top then? No. Apart from playing football, what if you were on holiday? Is Didn't that even worse? On holiday. <laughs> <laughs> no, the only Everton In stuff. The Maldives. Do you know what I wear? I wear Everton shorts or like an Everton training top. Like a, to the like pub. A, to the pub. <laughs> But Shit. I will never buy an Everton football shirt. Don't look at the receipt. Would you not? You would. No, I'd, sorry. No, I'd have one. But I'd, to like, play forty to in. To play forty in. Yeah. But I would never wear would it. Would you wear a ninety-five, ninety-six Borussia Dortmund? Yeah, home kit? that is one of the most beautiful kits in this room. Yeah. Yeah. There's not like I wouldn't even. I haven't even got the the confidence to wear a footy top that's not associated with my team. I'd wear like a a zip up like training gear. Of I'd even wear a Liverpool one of them to be honest with you. The training stuff is fine. Yeah. Fine. I can see. I can see what girls mean. There are. Th this is the thing. We think we wear football shirts well. Like, oh yeah, but I'm wearing this one. It's retro and everything. Girls don't know the difference. No, they are just associating you with all the bell ends that wear football shirts and look like fucking lumps. So I get it. If you are a girl and you don't know football, football tops is is. There's a lot of like, uh, you're that bell end. Like I look at you and I go, oh, I know that's a ninety two, ninety three Fiorentina home shirt. It's Batistuta. There's girls who think that's this season's kids. Yeah, it was foul. They're like, oh god, another football shirt. You're like, mate, come on. If you're into footy shirts, by the way, if you go to my Twitter, buy on, click the link, and use the code Carl Ten, you can get twenty percent off classic football shirts. The code UK. Right, cool. Are we getting a percentage of that? No, cool. You're getting your own private sponsor. He's gonna, he's gonna buy us presents with that money. He's told me. Nice. Yeah, I've told him that. Yeah. Uh, the ick thing I'm with Carlo yeah, I hate I getting so, the yeah. actual ick like when someone does something that you're just like I can't handle that in a relationship that's what the ick is meant to be but Carl's right there's girls now going in one tweet why can't I find a man who's nice to me I just end up with bastards all the time and they end up punching me mum's head in and I just don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> and you're then, picking the wrong guy, bro. And then like a week later the same girl's like oh my god I've been on three dates with this guy but then Yesterday we went to pictures and he got an ice blast, but he didn't even get mixed. He just got one flavor, got the ick, and it's like you're yeah, a fucking die. stupid cunt, yeah. and you're gonna either end up getting like mentally and physically abused for the rest of your life by men because you because someone doesn't get the same ice blast flavor as you, or you're gonna end up lonely, <laughs> fingering yourself, surrounded by cats. Yeah. The only two. I mean, <laughs> the irony is on this podcast we've spent nearly two years of getting really specific about things that annoy us and wind us up, and it's just a version of that. But I get it. It is very Instagram it's horrible. sort of language, it's horrible. isn't it? It's if you were so, what are the turnoffs? What are the? It's just another way of saying turn off. What are the things about when when you were single? What are the turnoffs for you when you when a girl does something? Now that's what Dominic Clare asked. He was like, "What are the turnoffs when you were younger?" <sighs> Girls that overdo perfume. Oh, Fucking right. hell! I hated that. Okay. Just watching watching girls go. Right, I'm getting ready. <laughs> You're like what the fuck? You got BV? What are you trying to cover up? <laughs> What's BV? Smelly Biff syndrome. Right. Bad vagina. Yeah. Bow, bow, bow was it vagina. PV? It's BV. Man's on marking. You yeah. You hate a girl <laughs> when you were single. You hate a girl that zone marked you. You like a woman mark. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I can't really remember, but there are, there is things where I've been like, oh, I'm, I'm fucking done with you. Right. Not physical though. No, apart from a club foot. A club foot. <laughs> big shoe. Big shoe. Because the old one is what, the... big issue? No, it's a big shoe. Steve she... Harris is getting loads of recognition on this. Seen Shallow Hall. Yeah. When she got her, her next toe to her big toe is longer than the big toe. Oh, that's a bit unkind with Finn. Uh, I'm not bothered by no, but people like that. like that. Oh, no, I could never do that. I could never... Yeah. But not on physical. Um, I don't like a girl who's too up her own ass. I like uh, humility. Yeah. Because mm. is beautiful, but she's sound. Yeah. I couldn't be asked to like taking selfies. When I met Laura shit. and she could get ready in 20 minutes, it was one of the greatest revelations of my life. It's part of the reason I was like, you're going to get married with me. Because we were just like, John, what, should we go out? And then it all it took was 15, 20 minutes. And we were like, oh my God, have we left the fucking house without you shouting and throwing like straighteners around. Brilliant. Yeah. So good. Um, and she's beautiful. She just get, can fucking get herself together quick. Yeah. Oh, in fact, yeah, the timekeeping thing. Now I'm remembering when you were trying to get to something and you'd agree to time. Oh, fucking go and find anything to wear. Like I just, every time. Grow the fuck up. I just like. Or buy a size up. <laughs> yeah, Adam I just lie to my missus and tell yeah. her we're leaving 45 minutes before we are and then yeah. she's never late. He tries to do it to me. Yeah. But I'm not stupid. <laughs> right. 
It's like, yeah, we're, table's booked for seven. It's not booked till half eight. <laughs> nice. When it works out. Yeah, we're going for a drink before we go to the restaurant then. If, if. Yeah, right, okay. Clever. Have you got any, you've not got any, like, turn-offs? Smoking. Number one for me. Smoking. Yeah. Smoking. Smoking. Dr- drugs, drugs for me. Yeah, like a girl me. who's like a, a coke head. Yeah, I, couldn't, I just couldn't. It's just not attractive. No, mm. it's not. But, you know. I do cat like, but like yeah, just get ketamine. Oh, good ketamine, yeah. What about cigars? I saw an, on Instagram. There's a bit of a lane with South American girls who take pictures with cigars. I don't. I, no, and I, I don't know what it was, but I was like, <laughs> I find this very. Yeah, but they don't yeah, smoke no, cigars. On, like at a wedding and an occasion, absolutely. I'm like, do you know what? That's a it, weirdly a bit sexy. But if she's got like a forty a day cigar yeah. habit. <laughs> 40 <laughs> cigars and she'd be dead in three wow. weeks. Wow. <laughs> what, and she's inhaling? What kind of animal is this? If that girl doesn't suck your dick on the first day, so you've done something majorly wrong. Well. Hey, cigars. Adam, I'm from Cuba and I smoke 40 cigars a day. Don't take like an that hour girl to smoke. pokes fucking hard. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> take me on a day. That's okay. Take me on a day, Adam. I wake up, I have Cocoa Pops, I smoke a fucking Cuban. She is back a dirty back. girl. Dirty girl. But yeah, smoking and drugs for me. Are oh, I'll tell you what I don't like as well. Um, <laughs> Jews? But, no, God. <laughs> yeah. Jews, Muslims, New York Christians, Jews. any religion. Uh, when Good when they're sort of like, um, <laughs> like someone who just pretends they don't want food that they do. You know when someone's just like, like, oh, what are we gonna get? Oh, I don't know whether I'm gonna start. I might just get like a little side side, and then for me main, I might just get you know the the fish, but with no chip. I just want like a when when like three months later they're like, I want everything. Like I just order whatever you want. Just be sound. Just be not. What I don't like is uh, obvious fakeness, which I struggle a lot with in comedy because there's so many fucking hey man, haven't seen you for ages. Oh, and there, I there is a lot recently. I see, isn't there? I see right through the back of their head and I'm like, fuck you. That's why I struggle with industry people in comedy. Because I'm like, do you all believe each other? Because I know you're all full of shit. And that with like a girl, if they're like, yeah, I'm like this. And I'm just like, you're obviously not. That like, I, I just need everyone in my life to just be normal. Just be sound. Sound yeah. normal people who are chill is what I like to surround myself with. I think that's one of the easier things about getting a bit older. It's just like, I remember like Laura holding in farts and everything. And on reflection, you're like, if she'd have on the first day, like at Nando's gone, wait, <laughs> get on that. I, would, I wouldn't have been asked. Who cares? She's farts like that anyway. Like, what do you think? I don't know. Like, why is this thing like, oh, never, we don't fart. Eventually you're gonna do. Just get it all out. Early doors. We don't. Be yourself. Be the animal that you are. Like if if Laura was gone, gone. She left. Yeah. And she fucked off. And she'd done with me. She's gone to it, Lisbon. She's gone to Lisbon. <laughs> she's in Portugal. She's, she's gone. She's gone to Lisbon to work as a private detective, looking for unnamed missing children. Matty McCann. Oh right. Yeah. Because because it turns out she did she went online right and she did a personality test and it turns out she's got a detective the, the detective personality <laughs> she's got the detective personality and and, and she got an email because she clicked a box that said we we can share your data with other people she got an email from the Portuguese police department right and they were like I'm sick of them emails aren't you African princes dick enlargers and the Portuguese police and they emailed her and said look Loz. Uh, we we we've read your report Very and you fun. are you are the most detectivist person we've ever <laughs> come oh, across. That hurt and, my ears. <laughs> and we think like you could help us find some of these missing kids. Like it obviously it'd be fucking. We did the jackpot if you help us find Maddie. We're not. Oh, expect, she's, oh, we're she's, not expecting that. Yeah, she's, she's the, the white whale, isn't she? She's the goat, she's the goat yeah. of missing Portuguese children. Yeah. So, but if you like, there's, there's a fella missing called Jerome and another one called Keith. And if you find either How of them, how can you not find Jerome and Keith in Portugal <laughs> when they're all called Jose? <laughs> just literally open the book and go. Just find the Jerome. There he is. Just shout Jerome. Yes, yeah, just him. go Jerome. And they're like, what? No, but if you kidnap a kid, you obviously change their name. Right. It's right. not going to be in the phone book. Sorry, there's a kid. I've, I've there's... kidnapped this kid, and let's just make sure he's in the phone book. Oh, sorry. Okay. I, this is Jerome's number. Is do you is reckon it, they've ever it... checked the phone book for Madeline McCann? <laughs> That's why Laura's being brought in. To so look just at the, to check. The obvious stuff that some people she's miss. She's not just a... Per- she's, it's only children that she finds. Missing children. And there's a missing child called Keith. Jerome. Somewhere in Portugal. Jerome, <laughs> you know, yeah. Right. 
I don't think she's going to be in Portugal long. <laughs> While she's away, if I start dating anyone else, I want them to f- fart on the first date. <laughs> Oi, holler at me. You get my, 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 my next ex-wife is definitely a podcast listener because I can't pull anywhere else. So I just want to be, I want to be, I want the animal that it, it like, just get it all out. It's Cameron Jerome as well. <laughs> in Portugal? Yeah. It's Cameron Jerome. Jerome. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense, Cut it wrong. It's just saying Jerome's. And now I say Jamome. <laughs> Jamome, motherfucker. <laughs> it's just noises. <laughs> Jamone. So Jamone. If you want your Jamone. ex-boyfriend to just pick his ick. Pick his ick and then use it against him. Yeah. So I've doubled up two emails there. I thought Yeah, that start was... smoking. Start doing cat. Smoking Asians I can't tell you Yeah, smoking Asian. Something about that cigar thing, though, that I did like. An excess power. First. You're attracted to the same thing as me. You just don't oh. admit it. It's power. Oh. If a woman is smoking a big, chongy Cuban cigar, you just know she's got money and influence. And you're like, fucking use that money and influence. To money get- and influence. I agree. Do you see cigars and think, fucking money? Yeah. Influence. Do you not? I think a uh, South American dirtbag, and I like it. With money and influence? Oh, what if it's Hamlet, though? Play. I'm on the. I thought he meant to play as well, but he means the, the cigars, c- the cigar style. What's that? It's the type what? of cigar. It's a Hamlet cigar. It's a type. What? It's a type like regal for cigarettes. <laughs> it's so retarded. Like like a Hamlet. What? Like the play? <laughs> no, like the cigar. You know, because we're talking about cigars, and the cigars called Hamlet. Well, I didn't. I've never heard of it. I'm sorry that I'm not a fucking cigar how, fucking how encyclopedia nev- like you. But how in that context? What about yeah, smoking the uh, Shakespearean play? I've never seen Hamlet, so I thought yeah, maybe I, they smoke cigars in the play. Oh right, okay. I do not that she's smoking the fucking. Book. I've seen the Lion King. I know that's sort of based on Hamlet. And that's Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah, it is that one. The Lion King is Hamlet too. Essentially, it is. Yeah, remastered. It, it, it is though, it's based on Hamlet, isn't it? It's the same, it's the same loose story, yeah. Yeah. Uncle kills your dad, you go back, smash your uncle's head in, take his house. That's what I, happens, I genuinely it? didn't know that. Yeah, and she's the man's based on... Yeah, so if, if you see I'm, a woman... That's not a lie, she's the man's based on a Shakespeare story. I can't remember what it is. What is it, Finn? Romeo and Juliet. No. Um, it's going to do me that, isn't it? Finn's going to Google it. Filter. Talking, talking. It's with the googling. Uh, Twelfth night. night. Fucking. That's mad, mad that. Yeah, there's loads of films that that are based on it. Shakespeare was quite talented, really. When you think about it, man, he wrote some stuff. Yeah, he was a good lad. Mm-hmm. You want to see the Globe in London, or do you just want to see a picture on Google? What's the Globe? It's is the recreation of the Tudor Theatre that he used in the middle of London. i was quite. I'd, yeah, I'd like to go to that. I mean, I'm, oh, in, I'd I'm like into to play it. Yeah. Can you well, play it? What is it? This is no, active now. No, you can't book in and have a word live show at the Globe. They're not into it. <laughs> Why not? Because they spent tens, maybe hundreds, I don't know how many millions, but so much money recreating it. It's it's a like original Tudor theatre where there's the standing section. It's all made of wood. So there's no I'd, shows in there? There's just Shakespeare, Shakespearean plays, I think. I think I think that's what they do. I think they keep it authentic. Why don't we just lie then and say we're going to put on our own production of Hamlet and then we just do a live show? And like, then every now and again we just that. mention Hamlet. And they're like, this isn't Hamlet. Be like, it'll, it'll all reveal itself by the end. Yeah. And then we get off. Yeah. <laughs> You've not heard the twist. It's ye old have a word. <laughs> <laughs> they won't know though, will they? We'll I just be like, yeah, have yeah. an inkling. Yeah. <laughs> Why? When you turn up. What uh and what what are you which uh, production are you doing? Uh the Lion King one. <laughs> <laughs> that one. That's Shakespeare's. The Lion King he won. A wumba way, a wumba way, a wumba way. In the Hamlet, the mighty Hamlet, Adam smokes tonight. Oh my God, another Liverpool song. But we've done it. There you go. That was Hamlet. Put us on the globe. Book us. Give us a shout out. Yeah. Email us. Have a way of Get on us. <laughs> Get on me. Let's, let's come and do the globe. <laughs> That's now actually a dream for me for this podcast. That's how my brain works. That is a lifelong dream you've had for 48 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> you've just told me I can't do it. And genuinely, the back of my brain has gone... Right, Hang on, up. I don't know that the Globe... I'm not sure, but I, I think I heard that because they've recreated it as like a fucking 16th century th- playhouse, and it's open air, isn't it, and everything, I think they only do 
like Marlowe and Shakespeare and stuff of that era. I think. Okay. I don't know if you can turn up and do Imperious, you know, a London date. Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Are you doing a Shakespeare? Yeah, 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 yeah. One man Shakespeare. <laughs> Did you see the Shakespeare bit about Victoria's Secret? Yeah. Uh, Shakespeare was really into like trans trans issues. <laughs> Did you not know that? Back then, no. I imagine the models were even thinner because it was less progressive back then, wasn't it? Like they wouldn't let fat women even in the shop, never mind in the window. Wasn't fatness seen as beauty back then? No, no, that was even before that. No, 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 that, yeah, there was a, like, your pale skin was a, a sign of wealth, wasn't it? If you were pale, it meant you never had to be outdoors working the land. And you were fat, it means you had loads of food. Yeah. <laughs> so you were rich. Yeah, it's just the same as if you were in Africa as well, apparently. They're like, wow, look at that fat cunt. <laughs> rich. Smoking a cigar. Yeah. <laughs> Powerful. Adam! Adam! <laughs> give me some of your Twinkies! I let you shoot another villager! You know, from Not before. before. <laughs> Two more. All right, Lids, we need to tell you about our sponsor, NordVPN. But if I'm being completely honest and sounding like a granddad, I don't know loads about VPNs. I do, though. VPNs are an absolute belter. And the fact you watch as much porn as you do and have never used one of these is absolutely fucking mind-blowing. It is essentially premium cyber security. It hides everything you're doing. And with one click of a mouse, you can decide you're in any country in the world. So, you know, like Netflix is in America is a lot bigger than in the UK. Right. You can go, I'm in New York, lad, and it'll give you American Netflix. If you want to watch a Premier League game at 3 o'clock in the afternoon that isn't available in the UK, you can go, do you know what? I'm in Saudi Arabia, lad, and I'm watching a bit of fucking Liverpool against Tottenham Hotspur. Can I be in Burundi on a Monday? You can be in Burundi on a Monday. Can I be in Dubai on a Friday? <laughs> you have Dubai on a Friday. You oh, can my be God. There's 59 different countries on uh, NordVPN. I think for me, because I've, I've used this company for a couple of years, so it's a big benefit that they're now sponsoring us and I can sell them. They're the best VPN company in the world. The cybersecurity is next level. And we've now got a promo code that gets you 73% off up to that. And a bonus gift if you sign up using our code. <laughs> That's a lot. Go to nordvpn.com slash have a word and use the custom code have a word. And on top of that, 30 day money back guarantee. So if you get it and you think it's shite, they'll give you your dough back risk free. Absolute belter and an honour to have them on board as a sponsor. Megan. I uh that pizza we've just had oh. might, might be the worst pizza. Absolutely. I've what? Ever had. That was so bad. What? Oh, there's nothing better than when people disagree on quality of pizza because they're right. This is gonna be like a vaccine debate. There will be no <laughs> listening from now on. <laughs> <laughs> John Hastings is here! Welcome to the show, lad. How what? are you? Wow, well, hang, oh hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. Right off on. the fucking bat, he's just shitting on the pizza. He's just shitting on the pizza. was fine. It wasn't. It, it was. was it, genuinely, it was in the top three worst pizzas I've ever eaten. Right? How Maybe are you there, start? Finn? Fine, yeah. We yeah, went same. pizza. We spent about £180 on five pizzas. Stuffed yeah. crust? Was that stuffed crust? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's stuffed crust. You got to go stuffed crust at Pizza Hut because it's, it's uh, kind of yeah. not great pizza, but the <laughs> stuffed crust, the novelty of it, like... You go to Pizza Hut not for the pizza. You go because we went, we had a Pizza Hut. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, also, because you can take your kids there and they can shout and shit. And everyone's like, it's fine. It's Pizza Hut. There's no anxiety. Alfie Brown and I took his kids the day after 2019 Edinburgh Festival to Pizza Hut. And let me tell you about uh, Alfie's son and daughter. They are, A, they, much like Alfie, will not play ball. And two, <laughs> are very, very, very adorable. So we walk into Pizza Hut and his son just looks at his very hungover dad and his hungover dad's hungover friend he just met and just went, Daddy, you know I don't like pizza. And I was just like, oh, how's this going to go? And Alfie was just like, you do like pizza. You talked about this all morning. And then his daughter was like, I also do not like pizza, Daddy. And these fucking stoic children ordered chicken fingers at a pizza hut. Wow. And, he, and I watched Alfie Brown demolish a pepperoni pizza while I – Hit that pizza buffet like eight times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's uh, something about the salt and sugar content of a pizza pizza that really helps with mm. a hangover. Well, I'm trying to watch me wait at the minute, so I got I got thin-based thin uh, well? non-stuffed crust. 
Because that's basically like the Diet Coke of pizza, isn't Do it? you remember the very, and I don't mean to mean, make this sound as hurtful as it's about to sound, <laughs> that very <laughs> brief time where you were so in shape? Do you remember that time? Uh, no. What, I'm really good at creating false perceptions of positivity. That was six hours long. I've, oh, I've never no, no, been. No, no, no. Do you I mean when we did the boxing? That was the boxing. Yeah, I but saw- if you look at those pictures, I'm like, <laughs> I'm thin for me. Yeah, yeah but, but that's like, still thin. Yeah, no, but people would like, if if that was like Dan, people would be like, fuck, Dan, wh- why? What's going on? Yeah, but like, again, I want to be, I, you're my friend, I don't want to be rude. But where you were coming from to where you got <laughs> to was incredibly impressive, you know what I mean? It would be yeah. like, you started off, you were covered in piss and shit, <laughs> and by the time you got to the boxing, it was only piss. <laughs> So, you know, yeah. Adam's in great pissy yeah. shape. Yeah, like the smell is vastly improved. Yeah, it's still it's bad. Still, it's still not good. Like, he can't come in the house. But, oh, yeah, he can get in the car as long as, you know, as long as it's behind the seats. I didn't realize you got you got in relatively good shape for the oh, box. What were you doing at the box? Were you fighting, John? Mm-hmm. This legendary I, I beat up Chris Martin. It was the greatest day. I they were a pair of pussies. They had a no face hit and reel in a boxing match. First of all, uh, the no face hitting rule is because Chris was auditioning to be on Louisa Omelette Man's Omelan? Omelette The Omelette Man. <laughs> Whoa, uh, 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 Louisa Omelan, thank yous, sketch show the next day. And I don't want him to not get work. Because we're raising money for a uh, for a kid with cancer, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. He's also a thin person, and he needs money too. So we had a no face hitting <laughs> rule, and then I'm also twice the size of Chris Martin, so I was bullying him pretty ex- pro- professionally in the ring. And then he punched me in the face, and I saw red and knocked him to the ground <laughs> in pure rage. So hang on, you're bigger than him, but you aren't allowed to punch the face. Is I, that a disadvantage? Here's what it was: is we went. Can we give some context? To what, has this been discussed they, on the show? They know. They know. Yeah, they yeah. know. Oh, of course. It, oh, by the way, if you're like, oh, what are you talking about? Do your fucking research, fam. We've had Kai on. We've had Elliot on. Oh, like, they, they, oh they, yeah. They, I mean, it was. So our plan. So we were going into. And our plan was Chris was just going to give me the rock bottom. And then we were going to double count out, double knockout. <laughs> and then the first fight, which was Tom Houghton and Phil Nickel went in the ring. And the crowd when there was violence, when yeah! <laughs> and everyone else had trained, but Chris is on his honeymoon. I was in Canada. So we were just, we we're like, we're not training. Sorry, Kai. Like we're going to, we're comedians <laughs> doing boxing. We're not like the rest of these psychos that all think they're fucking Mike Tyson. Like everyone else <laughs> was taking it so seriously. Me and Bobby Mayer were cracking jokes. I was threatening Chris with HPV at one point. Like there's just, <laughs> there was no levity. And then we just were like, we're going to have to fight. So I went and got the g- cornerman and went, we didn't train. You need to show me how to box. And he was just like, what? I was like, we didn't train. I, like the rest of these fucking losers, I guess, needed something to do over Christmas. Where I come from, you drink and you smoke and you eat bad food over Christmas. Show me how to fight. So they showed me how to take two swings. Luckily, Chris is being shown the same thing. And my I, mean, cor- I mean, it kind of some guy from Blythe going, fucking fists? <laughs> yeah. Just throw them, man. Yeah. You fucking what you want to do a lot is you just hit him in the kiss. Um, <laughs> that's what all Geordie uh, people sound like. <laughs> that's what they all sound like. Those I'm sorry. Mexican Geordies. <laughs> Yita me na kiss. You don't have punch him in the face. I'm from the Mexican yeah. quarter of Blythe. <laughs> <laughs> They, yeah. they do have one of them. Yeah, yeah. Chinatown. I just want to point out the you Mexican are, quarter. Dan is really going after two groups of people that will fucking remember Mexicans and bl- people from Blythe. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And that's the true. three people in the middle of that Venn diagram are fuming right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Sanchez O'Rourke from Blythe, England. <laughs> Sanchez. And some, I love, and I love how his called, first name is Mexican, yeah. but his family name is the Jordy one. Yeah, his dad. His dad is a Jordy. That's how that happened. I don't know. I, I, don't, know, I don't know. I what really insist you under- that. He's being called after yeah. my father. Okay. Okay. I, how much do you want to bet? The odds are of a Jordy man just going to Mexico and fucking without a condom are one hundred percent. That's a guarantee. You put a a man from Newcastle in Cancun. And just go have sex. He's not going to be like, at a fist and eat a condom, no lads. <laughs> like, it's not going to happen. I genuinely, I'm starting to think that, I don't know if anyone from Blythe has ever been to Mexico. <laughs> yeah? Why do I need to go to like a further away spin? 
<laughs> I'll go to the close one. No, no. Because you, what you're saying is 90, 95%. It's the 5% that have to go to Mexico because they're no longer welcome in Spain. That's who I'm talking about. You know what I mean? The, the ones who really wanted to leave Europe yeah, it's and like stuck all, with it. It's like all the Irish people that weren't welcome in Liverpool, so they had to go to America. Yeah. <laughs> and build New York. Exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. A guy called Tomo from Blade living in Mexico City. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. The if fucking he's not- sandwiches here, yeah. lad. They just fold them over. Is that like- <laughs> I can't do your accent. I, just but I-, I don't give a fuck. Oh, that, yeah. I can't- also, by the way, entire population of the UK, none of you fucks except for Dan Nightingale can do a fucking North American accent. No, I can. Go ahead. <laughs> right, right. Go what's ahead. hard here is, what's hard here is, he's been doing his Al Pacino before you got here. So this oh, is- oh, <laughs> oh. Al Pacino doesn't count. That's that's that that no. Because first of all, it's just Ric Flair, but tired. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh. You know that's that's not a skill. You know it's like doing Ken Dodd. It's just oh, like that's not a, being able to do a Scouser oh, accent. Yeah. Ken Dodd. That's Ken Dodd. Oh. Yeah, you were expecting a fucking Ken Dodd <laughs> reference on have a word. The word today is. Surprise. <laughs> how so, how uh, is your Pacino and his Ken Dodd racist <laughs> against Japanese people? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Right, give me a sentence to say. Uh, oh, <laughs> what a lovely time we're having. Oh, what a Here, lovely no, time we're having. We're, first of all, what? Happened to this American. American Jew. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. They, 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 oh, what they, a lovely time we're having. You brought pasta. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. You got bolognese. I didn't, re- I didn't realize. It's the greatest it. Tuesday yeah. all year. Stop doing this. Did one, <laughs> did, one, did one of the kids from Newsies have a debilitating brain injury? Like... Holy loving God. Say bolognese God. again. What? Say bolognese again. Yeah. Bolognese. <laughs> That's oh awesome. my God. Like Thomas Green. That's Australian Jew. Yeah. <laughs> Australian Jew. Oh. You brought pasta. Oh my God, it's getting worse. It sounds like this person's from the part of Brooklyn that got uh, submerged during the last But it sounds hurricane. like they're from Brooklyn. No, the, you, you missed the other part where they drowned. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable! That was so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. His Blythe and your American. <laughs> oh my God! No, I smell. No. I smell a buddy cop movie that no one ever wants to see. Sanchez O'Rourke and drowned Brooklyn boy try and solve them. Forget about in- it. Oh my God! I want to. <laughs> no, you have to do a neutral regular. North uh, America. Hi there. Could I get a cup of coffee to what go? What the fuck? That was good. No, that was fucking fantastic. It was not good. Could I get a cup of coffee to go? A little bit of milk in that, please. And maybe some sugar, too. Okay. Thanks for that weather report. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I didn't realize. Yeah, do you read the news on Tucson today? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you're going to find it easier if you black this American up. No. Oh. oh, here we go. <laughs> what was I, that? They told me about this podcast on Twitter, and I fucking knew it would come to blacking up. <laughs> Oh, motherfucker. No, 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 no. Joe, it was Joe. No. Who no, else? John, are, John's got a career in LA. Yeah. Um, this will be frowned upon. I got news for I got. A, I have a career in Liverpool. I don't even think they want to see that happen there. My God. Well. What is this? The I've 90s the on BBC One? Yeah. <laughs> sort of. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, a- yeah, Chris Martin's in LA, isn't he? The guy that you twatted is in, also in LA. That's right. We travel as a pack. Do yeah, you know, but- there are there are there are certain moves in comedy that make me go, oh, oh, and it's when someone that I know who is gigged in all the shitholes that I've gigged in is then going, oh, now I'm in LA. Yeah, it's just such a. It feels like such a life up. Is it realistically, or is it just does it? Is it the perception? Well, it's this. The weather is way better. That's the main thing. Is the weather is about twenty degrees every day and sunny. Nice. So it's just like, it's as hard as being a comedian anywhere because there's still a lot of rejection and annoying bullshit you have to deal with. But as opposed to England where 90% of the time someone's like, oh yeah, we were going to give you that amount, but like, I can't because I don't know, I just am an unscrupulous piece of shit human being. So oh, what I know, are you I know who you're talking about. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know what's fun, but especially in the UK is there's four guys that it could definitely be that are totally listening, all thinking... There's no way it's me, and it's definitely one of those four. <laughs> definitely one of those four. Um, but in the LA, you walk outside and you're like, "Oh, the weather is it's fucking great." Like it, you're not like, 
oh, this guy's a piece of shit, and also it's super rainy and cold. Yeah. But, like, the main difference is, is L.A., no one pays. Like, there's just no money, like, for a club set because they're like, well, we cannot pay you or we cannot pay the most famous comedians in the world. They don't need the money, so we've decided you don't need the money. So you just have to do a bit more traveling than you would in the UK is sort of the only difference to sustain in America. Like road gigs, you go out to, like, the... No, like, in the city. Like, you know, like, if you're in, like, London you're doing Top Secret, they're going to give you some money. The equivalent of Top Secret in LA will give you what they call cab fare. Yeah. They'll give you $20. And that's, that's insane. A, that's about it. You're not getting paid for your product, though. No, because, you see, here is the thing. In Britain, you guys had a wave of socialism post-World War II that imbued the entire nation with this sense of, like, you get paid for your work. North America never had that, so it's a purely capitalist society. Right. I, I hope everyone's really enjoying this comedy podcast, by the way, but that's the sort of thing. <laughs> no, we do too. We, no, talk, no, we yeah. talk industry. We talk about it. Okay, you never, yeah. you never knew. Um, so it's basically, that's the only difference. But, and this uh, I said this to Paul Tonkinson, and I thought his head was going to explode. I prefer that there is way less of a financial incentive to doing gigs in Los Angeles because I am way you are way more free to just try shit because oh, yeah. if they're yeah, like there's, that no pre there's not you're not getting 300 quid for the gig where they're like you're the headliner and you're doing 30 and you better fucking nail it because yeah. I'm paying you they're like you can be like you're giving me well, 20 dollars I'm gonna try well they bit. still will be come on man you're on stage at the fucking Melrose Improv don't fuck this up and yeah. you're like yeah that's true but like in your there's sort of a thing to it in for me coming from the British circuit to there where it's like, well, I can I can fuck around and still yeah. kind of make it seem like the thing at the end was supposed to be there. And I you can't do that in certain clubs. They just also are paying way less attention yeah. in certain respects. Like what they care about is the crowd leaving at the very end, smiles on their faces. They're listening for laughs. UK club people a lot are actually they'll they're looking at the jokes and they don't care about the audience react. Do I understand? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean. makes sense yeah, the difference? Yeah. I just I like I like living in America a lot more and I love visiting the UK. I was so fucking done with this country. I like <laughs> I can't even like I I don't want to be rude to the people listening or no, the you people that have hosted me. <laughs> All English people in my book start at the level of scum and I have to meet them. <laughs> And they slowly <laughs> rise above that as individuals. But they are starting at such a fucking deficit. And you're going, why? Name a fucking thing. And that's what... Brexit alone is... Uh, do you understand? This is what really pissed me off is throughout the fucking pandemic, every single one of my fucking English... Bet you don't... Bet you weren't living... Bet you wish you weren't living in America now. I'm like, no, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. I know Americans and I know English people. English people are really good at the beginning <laughs> Because, but you guys accept, you'll be like, we did it. We locked down and then they're going to fuck everything up. And <laughs> Americans are really good at being shit until the last second. And then they'll fix everything. And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> it's fucking Britain was nailing COVID and then you fucked it. And America was fucking it. And at the last second, they're like, Give everyone the vaccine, and also oh let's God. kill all these people that like Trump too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, yeah, I remember that bit when we were like, we like, oh last summer God. we were like, hey, well, that's us sorted. So what is it now? August. I mean, Texas is on fire. Florida's a fucking nightmare. Three months later, like, yeah, you're not seeing your nana at Christmas. Yeah, so yeah. Buckle up for that. It, people, yeah, shit changed, she's dead. <laughs> people were saying things to me like, uh, like <laughs> Trump, like. What are you going to, like, Trump's going to be in forever. And I even knew when he got elected in 2016, I'm like, there's no way that guy makes it two terms. He doesn't actually know how to do the job. He's just good at distracting people by saying wild shit. And then everyone's like, he sided with the Proud Boys. And it's like, yeah, he also hasn't filled 900 government jobs. So actually the real thing you should be concerned about is the fact no one in the country can get visas. Not the fact that he, like, yeah, he's a racist piece of shit. That's true. But he's distracting the actual shit he's not doing. He putting in a bunch of judges on a municipal level that believe that the Queen of England is a lizard. We need to be concerned about that because those fucks aren't going away, but he's going to be gone soon, which is what happened. And England's done the opposite, which is everyone's like, Boris Johnson, he's a bit of a joke. And now you guys can't get rid of him. He's like the fucking no. human equivalent of herpes. Oh he, just, he pops up at the least convenient time and never looks good. And he's the same kind of cunt, isn't he? Like, oh, yeah. Like he's the blonde buffoon. It's actually weirdly more dangerous. That's all like, oh, I'm bloody useless. And you're like, yeah, but you're still here fucking us. Oh. So he's like, and how how are we going to get rid of him? At least Trump was like, we I were, think we Boris just, wants to go now, though. 
Does he? I yeah, don't think he, he does. Is, I no, think I he think does. he's gone. We have yeah, a, I, I was prime minister, and he gets to say that forever now. Yeah, but you know what's waiting? You, okay, what do you want to be? Do you want to be the prime minister of England where none of his 11 bastard children and all of the ex-wives have to come at his money? He doesn't have to explain where all of this we, all of his wealth has come from from very variety of weird speaking gigs. He can just kind of hang out, blame it all on Matt Hancock, and talk to a cat. I don't know what he fucking does. But no, like, but also, who else is going to... like? For some reason, Keir Starmer, everyone hates... I don't know what happens in UK politics, but basically, <laughs> this is how it seems to go for the last 10 years, which is the Tories are in power. Nobody likes that leader. They are a horrifically corrupt, posh piece yeah. of shit. And then Labour is led by someone that would probably do a very good job as prime minister, but the entire country has just gone, fuck this piece of shit. Fuck them. Yeah. Well, and then you have the Lib Dems, which seem also like a really good idea on paper, but also everyone's been like... No, they're like the coronation chicken of political parties. <laughs> if you see someone order that by choice, you're like, you're fucked, man. What are you doing? <laughs> so the Liberal Democrats completely- Raisins for lunch? Are you out of your fucking mind? Go Dan is fuming right they, there. They, they well, are I just, I'm sick of Starmer getting slugged off like he's worse than the Tories. I, no, I, know, the, I know we, you think he's, he's a wet just, wipe. It's just I know, useless. Yeah, he's not, but he's worse. He's better than the Tories. Thank you. When, Where is this? Is this my, I this don't is, understand yeah. this about- When people don't like the Labour leader, I'm like, cool, that's fine. You think he's a wet wipe. We have the blonde, <laughs> bumbling Antichrist in charge. But this is, I completely I, agree with you. Honestly, if Osama Bin Laden yeah. came wearing a red rosette going, I'm Labour now, I'd be like, I'm weighing it up against Boris Johnson. Yeah. That's how much, that's how- The, the thing with Starman Osama is that- Bin Laden like, likes big tit blonde porn. I like big tit <laughs> blonde porn. <laughs> but that is a common ground. I understand how easy it was for people, especially in this country, which I think at its heart is quite a conservative country and it's very much mine. I got it mine. So they, to smear Corbyn was very, very, easy and you could convince most people who were either center left center right or far right that corbyn's not the answer keir starmer the pa since he's come in the papers want to help him and he's not even a lot like the the media thing they they're now turning on boris johnson and they've sort of been like starmer we'll sort of we'll be nice to you and we'll sort of back you and he's still doing fuck all that's my issue with Keir Starmer, okay, is that he's got the opportunity to be the new Blair, which is like a guy who is left wing. Hang the fuck on. Hang the fuck on. You, who? No one wants a new Blair. I, what no, the fuck are you talking it, about? Going in, in context, you'll understand what I mean. So Tony Blair was a left wing politician. He was center left who managed to get the support of a, a right wing press because he gives them enough of what they want while satisfying okay. the left wing of the country. Keir Starmer has got, drag. yeah, Keir Starmer has got the opportunity to be the, the, the new Tony Blair is in the one who got elected, not the one who was ousted for the war crimes. I'm talking the guy who was backed by the papers. It was given back and from people on the right and the center, the, the right of center. Starmer has that opportunity and he's he's pissing it up the wall because he's shite. All right, I want to know. But, what but he's still better though, isn't he? He's still better than no, the Tories. Yeah. Yeah, okay. good. That's the, because yeah, but, yeah, 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 you yeah, could not no. like him, but if he's offering steady opposition... I would, you, because yeah, I would vote Rylan Clark in. Yeah, that's the like, point. That's above what, the Tories. Be no, but hang on. Hang the fuck on and let's back up. First of all, don't ever, <laughs> ever again in your entire life act like anyone on the planet wants anything close to Tony Blair at any point of his leadership of this country. A guy was a sun-kissed fucking hustler from I love the Blair. fucking- I love Blair. I'm sure He's you do. so good. He's I've, such a douche. I, I have, him. Yeah, he is such a fucking <laughs> smarmy. He is the most pump, punchable version of English. This is what I'm talking about as a fucking nation of scum that you fucking are. That Tony Blair- <laughs> no, sorry, sorry, A sorry. lying- nah, That's what we're getting Financially back to. fucking dubious bag of shit- fucking moron who lied about Things his own religion because he knew it did not better. mesh with any of his messages, even though it was directly influencing his policies and he was not appropriately informing the people he was supposed to represent. Keir Starmer's problem is he is not a good quote unquote politician for these times because right now we've all been influenced by social media and everything is about getting the other side proving how bad they are. You have to appeal to the newspapers. Keir Starmer is not appealing to the newspapers because the fucking newspapers are part of the fucking problem. 
the reason why Britain has a Brexit is because the Daily Mail was blaming rickets on the fucking Scandinavians <laughs> and the fucking housing crash on a couple of Polish people who came to fix some fucking siding. The main fucking problem in fucking Britain right now is that for a long ass time, people were not holding any of their leaders accountable. They were just complaining and whining about a bunch of things and they get distracted by the actual problem, which is a over-reliance on people still thinking that the class system, the class system has been used so fucking well to keep everyone in their place in this country that they all do exactly what you guys did, which is you went, Keir Starmer is better than Boris Johnson. You go, let me tell you how fucking bad Keir Starmer is. And you yell for five minutes. And at the end of it, you go, he's still better than Boris Johnson. You go, of course he's still better than Boris Johnson. Yeah. But he can't get any traction because it seems like everyone hates him. Let's break it down like this. Boris Johnson, I'd love to see him just decapitated with some trimming shears just in the middle of Trafalgar Square. Just whatcha like that, you know, and just some blood geysers up. And then, you know what? Let's get nuts. Let's put Nick Clegg in charge. Remember him from like eight years ago? What the fuck did he ever do besides kind of look like he just, he didn't quite wash soap off of his body in the shower. He you made know what I'm one saying? policy, the, the spearhead of his entire campaign, and then fell for the most obvious trick in the world from David Cameron. He got in as part of a coalition. Mm. His entire campaign was, we will abolish tuition fees. And then he got this deal to be the... The number two to David Cameron. David Cameron was like, right, Nick, we're just going to have to, just so you know, we can give you everything you want. But this tuition fee thing, we're not going to abolish them. What we're actually going to do is treble them. And Nick Clegg was like, well, as long as I get everything else, not realising that was political suicide for him and the entire Liberal Democrat Party because they'd, they'd won the, their right to be part of the coalition by the fact that they promised students free tuition. And then that was the one thing that they sold down the river. Yeah, that was 11 years ago when I don't- Doesn't remember. matter. It does matter. It doesn't. Because, yeah, but the, you're in a completely right. different country than you were 11 years ago. I that, didn't expect this podcast today. Neither did I. I, I didn't. Like, <laughs> I was, we were I was, literally, I was like, so Chris Martin's in LA as well. Yeah, yeah, but fuck that. What about British politics? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's what I want to fucking know right now is where are those two brothers that looked weirdly similar but weirdly different who were both almost the leaders of- David the, and Ed Miliband. Oh, Miliband. the Miliband brothers. Miliband. Where are those two fucking dials? Well, Ed Miliband's got a podcast. That's what no, he's up to. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he does. If he's hosting it with like some weird circuit comedian like Adam he's, Bloom, he I'm swears shoot. on it as well. He's like, he's oh, like, he's cool like now. fucking bloody he Tories. Does he swear? First of all, he's just normal all, on it, yeah. Oh, all, no, 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 no. Norm, normal ish. For him. Yeah. He, he said, called George Osborne a horrible fat cunt last week. I mean, but he is. Fuck off. No, he didn't. Yeah, oh. he does. He's got his best. <laughs> Ed Miliband's got his best mate from school, and he's the producer. <laughs> <laughs> Let me eat him. <laughs> uh, so a couple of Jerome. <laughs> Careful. From, from before. Careful. Though. Okay, here, here's my question. Do you ever find this, and this is such a British comedy thing, is the, the weird people British comedians are friends with is always blows my fucking mind. Like, okay. first time I met Josh Howie, he then introduced me to Alexi Sale. <laughs> and I then, of course, embarrassed myself by just saying to Alexi Sale, Hey man, were you the Sultan in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade? And he said, "Indeed, I was." And I was like, "That's cool." And then he's like, "I used to do stand-up comedy." And right there, I was just like, "Yeah, whatever, Sultan from Indiana." Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's literally a groundbreaking comedian. The ages, no like, don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason, and then, Jason Manford is best mates with Dion Dublin. Yeah. And every time I see Jason Manford tweet about it, I'm like, it's almost like my head can't compute it. The, the do you know who Dion Dublin is? No idea. I He's a not... former Premier League footballer who now hosts Homes Under the Hammer. Oh my God. And no one has questioned that lateral so... move. Like, <laughs> what I like about Britain so much is that if you can get on television, you just get to be on television. And it does not matter. Like, why were you on television? Oh, um, I'm a horrific racist. And I was on uh, Question Time to expose the level of vitriol that exists within Britain. Also, I will be hosting a new show called uh, Conservatory Away. <laughs> and it's where we, uh, two people who live on the same street, uh, compete to see who has the better conservatory. <laughs> like that's, and that's exactly- Adam right. had like, we could do that. Yeah. <laughs> we can have a word. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, exactly, yeah. I, feel, I can already hear a new Patreons being opened. <laughs> Your dad's getting in his car to build an <laughs> unnecessary studio by a, a bunch of scientists. <laughs> do you know how fucking off-putting it is to come do this show? You just, you arrive at a barely built train station. You're picked up yes. by a 
by a very ner- uh, is this where I'm supposed to be? I was like, you work for these people. I don't fucking know. And then we get here, keep going to various doors that are unlocked, walking down a long hall with a bunch of people in scrubs. We parked near a bunch of canoes, and there's no water. And there's canoes in the car park. Yeah, there's for no canoes reason. in the car park. And then we walk in here, and on television, it's like you two have like led your legions of incels and various proud boys that enjoy this show to believe it's like a fun, cool bachelor loft. It's it. This is plastic, and it, behind the cameras, it literally just looks like a, a convention of various IKEA shelves and boxes. Like <laughs> when, you, when, when, you walk, when you walk down the corridors, and the scientists and like the yeah. fucking tech gimps, they're like rolling barrels with like mm. like the toxic thing, and they've all got masks on, and I'm just walking past in a brushy adornment. <laughs> yeah, shirt and just short, holding like, eight pizzas, it's like <laughs> stuffed crust, actually. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we do not belong yeah, in this building. Coming to do this podcast is kind of like that scene in Goodfellas where Robert De Niro is saying to Karen, like, just a little further oh, down. Yeah. <laughs> a little further down. Yeah, you should go in there. In there. Just, yeah. <laughs> Adam, Danny, I'll get him later. I'll get him later. <laughs> John Hastings is just running off. Mm. Jordan, uh, I want to talk about something because I, I thought it was brilliant and I want to sort of hear the story of what happened. So Jordan, COVID times, you did America's Got Talent to an empty arena. Did the day COVID started, I did. Fuck. Yeah, it was the day COVID started. So that like- The opening night of COVID. Yeah, exactly, yeah. The opening ceremonies of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> All the different countries were there in their, uh, in their masks. Just- <laughs> Botswana. So oh. set the scene. It's an empty <laughs> arena and it's you, the camera crew, and the four. Oh, there's judges. so much more to it. So, okay, so I've been going there every day that week. So, for those of you that uh, there's Britain's Got Talent, America's Got Talent, all of those sort of shows, how those sort of work is before you go out and do your talent, there's like an interstitial beforehand where they talk about your story and then. You go out and perform. Adam was actually, when we did Freddie Quinn's weird, po- what's with comedians in the north of England hosting podcasts in just weird warehouses? <laughs> Do you remember yeah. Freddie Quinn's podcast that was in like this yeah. weird warehouse and it was one mic for three of us and the no way the audio quality was very good? Yeah. And he, he, he recorded it on like a, a 480p camera and was still trying to cut in and it looked like, it looked like confessions of like, like when you watch like Making a Murderer and they've got his cousin on the couch and he's like, yeah, I did it. That's what we looked yeah. like on the video version of this podcast. Yeah, we both look like the red herrings in true crime documentaries. <laughs> Just talking to a guy who's definitely got some literal and figurative skeletons in his closet. I had to, if you remember, I had to leave in the middle of that to go argue with a producer because yeah. uh, they wanted my, I was married at the time and they wanted my, was I married at that point? Yes. Uh, they wanted my wife uh, to be on camera, and I had to explain to them she doesn't want to be on camera, and so you, she can't be. So we had to, like, invent it. Was that the America's Got Talent producer? Yeah, that's who I oh, was. Oh, wow, okay. I didn't even know that at the time. Yeah. Oh, so they were trying to do a sort of, like, a, 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 what was your sob story? They always want a sob story. And I was I was like, no. I'm like, I'm coming on as a comedian, doing it as a comedian. That's Love it. it. Right. That's it. Right. And the, as much as I did, was I went, I have dyspraxia. We can talk about that. But they... We'll make it. What is that? It's the, we've got music for a sad story. Oh. John has dyspraxia. Yeah. He's broken three fingers trying to get in the, in the door as he came into the studio true, today. Yes, no, I got covered in toxic waste because a woman named Roberta was yeah. too busy talking to an uh, attendant named yeah. Adrian. And his wife is shy. Yeah, my wife is shy. My wife didn't really feel like being on national television doing this. Good luck. Um, <laughs> so uh, I had to argue with them, and then I said, we'll talk about how I have dyspraxia, which means I was born without hand-eye coordination, whatever. So we do that, and they make you, like, wait for a long time, and then we'll, like, ask you a bunch of really cutting emotional questions to try and make you seem really, like, uh, like, make you cry. <laughs> it's so... And it, but it was one of those things where it's like, I've done enough TV that I could see... I knew as soon as I walked in, I was like, oh, I know what game... And, like, every every producer is an English person. Like, it's all... It was like, oh, I So got, what do they hit you with to try and... What, they're trying to make, get you to go, like, ah, and then they yeah, got like it. They'll, they'll, like, ask you, like, a really... Like, what was one question they were like? Um, so, was your dad around? And did it hurt when he wasn't around? And I had to be, and I literally, and I think that when I went, what does that have to do with stand-up comedy? Like, there was a couple of times where I was like, I got to watch it because I think they're getting very angry at me. But I kept, like, trying to make jokes. And uh, so, like, every day I'm going out there. And, like, as I'm traveling out there, I'm getting a call from, like, here of, like, okay, it's looking like this is real. Do not expect to be doing Edinburgh this year. We're going to be shut down for a couple of months. And oh, I was Christ, like, yeah. all right. 
Sure, sure. Australia gets cut. Like, I'm supposed to fly, do America's Got Talent, and then the next day fly to Australia, and they're like, Australia, guess a fucking again. I was like, well, all right, I'll be there in, I'll be there in 2021. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Wrong. Uh, and then, like, then finally it's just like, you're just doing America's Got Talent, and then the shutdown is coming. And then I showed up on Saturday when the governor of California is like, everyone go home. We are stay-at-home order. I'm at the Pasadena Center for the Performing Arts. Mwah. Ooh. Uh, me, uh, a comedian named Alex Hooper, uh, a guy, another comedian who I know very well who dresses as a chicken, are the three stand-ups. <laughs> and we sit Fatty there yeah. all day <laughs> while they are bringing in, like, opera singers, kids. Anyone who doesn't live in Los Angeles that needs props is all getting, like, shot that day. So it finally comes down to it's nine o'clock at night. I've been there for thir like 13 hours or something insane. Fuck. Smoked so many cigarettes. I'll never forget this. They remember at the beginning of COVID, they're like, whatever you do, keep washing your hands. So it's everyone <laughs> breathing in, just spitting in each other's mouths. But oh, our hands were clean, baby. Um, do that. I was the second last person. There was no audience members whatsoever. Uh, and they kept having to hold because there was technical problems. Also, like, the crew is dismantling the entire set. The last thing they have to do is take down the stage set. I'm the second last act. The crew is sitting in the audience, visibly wanting everyone to move it the fuck along. And so for 45 minutes of me waiting to go do this opportunity, which by this point I'm not even thinking about. I'm thinking about what the fuck are we going to do for COVID? How am I going to financially survive this? What the fuck is this? This is so, I'm not even thinking there's no audience, nothing. And then the opera singers before me get buzzed and the alarm sirens were set for if there's 5,000 people in a theater, not there's 34 people. <laughs> so it's the loudest noise ever to the point, I think it scared the opera singers and they had to reset them. <laughs> so I go from talking to Terry Crews about his custom shoes, which were really nice. Also Terry Crews, very funny. Cause he, he was like, are you, sh are your shoes custom? And I wanted to be like, no, Terry, not all of us have been on three sitcoms. So like <laughs> I buy my shoes off the peg, you rich fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then I have to go out there and all I'm thinking about is I don't want that fucking siren to go off. And so I like got really nervous and rambled and then fucking Howie Mandel like kind of calmed me down, did it. And then I just went into my fucking set and it would, went fucking well. Thank Christ. And went then, well to the judges, the builders. And that's it. Some scared opera singers. The opera singers were fucking gone. All oh, right. So that like it went well, and then I was like, "Holy shit!" Because with those shows, you're like, "I could be a fu I could look like a real cunt here, couldn't I? Yeah. Like, I could really embarrass myself. Yeah. And no one's forgetting that. No one's gonna tell me that they've watched it. But if this looks bad, I know the monsters that I'm very close friends with. They will have watched yeah. it. And also, we've all done gigs where you're like, "Oh my god, this is a shit show." Yeah. And if you die, you go, ah, what the fuck was I meant to do? But it's TV. Yeah, you don't want, it's you a don't, TV thing. It's a TV thing that is like one of, quietly one of the biggest shows in America where my career is now. Like, it's just like, fuck, I don't want, and it went well, thank God. At this point, I don't know how it's going to be edited. I then have to have a 30-minute conversation with a lawyer about everything that needs to happen. Now, here's where things get fascinating. I now have to get home. So LA has very limited public transport, and there's a pandemic. I don't have a car. There's no Ubers in the city of Los Angeles, and I'm 35 miles from my house, so I have to take LA public transport, which is just me and the wildest homeless people. Like, we're talking like, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> you don't have unhomed the way LA has unhomed. Like, British homeless people, okay, yeah, you bring me your weird, craggly voice and you're, you might have a knife. I'm like talking about like, that guy is naked, that guy is on fire, and he does not seem to care. Like, like ooh, yeah, oh. oh there's, actually, there's actually a conspiracy in Liverpool that there's no homeless people, and they all just get dropped off on a coach every day in town. And I've actually seen a bus full of homeless people pull up and they all get out. And right. they just go and I don't believe. I don't believe anything you just said. Well, also, <laughs> the, 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 the homeless people in Liverpool have worked out that if they're arseholes, they get nothing. So they're incredibly friendly, courteous, and complimentary. Genuinely, there's a homeless man near Hot Water went, Hey, lad, 
lovely hat. <laughs> Have a great evening. And I was ignoring him. I was past him. There was no way he was getting money from me. He was like, lads, lovely hat. Really like your style. Have a great evening, by the way. And I was like, oh, God. It's, They're like, that's how they've worked out. It's like the how to get people money. of Liverpool have watched how the rest of the city behaves and gone, let's do the opposite. We'll do the opposite. <laughs> we are good people, John Hastings. I'm not saying you're not good people. I am saying on a street level, you are very, <laughs> what's the word? Not your best selves. <laughs> <laughs> this is oh, John, when you were slagging off the UK, that will go down very well around here. Now you're slagging off Liverpool, and I'm just here to watch. <laughs> Bring it on. For example, and Careful, I, will, I was watching, I was walking with my uh, my ex-wife in Liverpool, and we walked by a woman who was full passed out, full passed out, face down, vertically on the pavement in front of a women's Typical schools. tourist. She was from yeah. Manchester, I know. She I know 100% was not. <laughs> Manchester she was, woman I spoke to this woman and her voice was so scouse. It should have come with a- Careful. Beatles t-shirt. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did the radio edit on that one, didn't we? <laughs> um, Anyway, she's super passed out. My uh, my girlfriend at the time, then wife, now ex-wife, like gets <laughs> down and is like, are you okay, honey? And the reason why we had to is because her boyfriend was trying to wake her up and her boyfriend was intensely bleeding from both hands. <laughs> and how he was trying to wake her up was hitting her on the back. She's wearing an all white dress. So he's just covering her in his dirty, weird, drunk scouser blood going, come on. <laughs> Come on! Girl kind of wakes up. My ex goes, are you uh, are you okay? And the passed out woman goes, ah, fuck off. We don't like out of town. Scottish. I knew she was Scottish. She was from fucking Liverpool. I can't do your terrible accent. We don't like out of town. I like Shrek. I don't care. <laughs> she was from the world. Stop. Attention, Liverpool. Stop being so impressed with yourselves. Other things have existed. Oh, God. Can you I'm name? Out. I'm, out. I'm out of this episode, everyone. <laughs> I want you to know, name? everyone. I want you to Can know you Dan name another city on the planet who's had more of an influence on the world than Liverpool? New York City. No. What is, what is New York, York is essentially just a Scouse America, uh, American Scouse. Are you out of your fucking mind, <laughs> you child's drawing of a Scouser? <laughs> Can you name one city that has had more influence on the world? Rome, Paris, <laughs> what Los have they Angeles. What the fuck have they done? Apart from influence Blackpool Tower, that's it. Oh, I'm not even fucking, I'm not even fucking <laughs> starting in on this. For Beatles a invented music, pretty much. Oh my God. Oh, Jesus. Yo, yeah. Tom O'Connor, greatest <laughs> comedian. <laughs> I don't even- Tom O'Connor, Ken Dodd, you know him. Yeah, I don't Ken Dodd, who's, who's Tom O'Connor? Uh, uh, he's the- Who's Tom O'Connor? He's the husband of the woman that was laying face down on the floor. <laughs> Oh, so, bloody hams, Tom. Fuck it all. This is also up. why I like making fun of Liverpool, because everyone does what they end up with. Watch out! I don't know what's going to happen. I was like, I, I know where my fucking bread's born. Do you know the first thing you ever said to me when we met? <laughs> the first, and I mean, I, the first I, thing. I, go ahead. So it was when I lived with Danny Mac in Chester, and I had like a Saturday night off, and you were doing the frog with Danny, and we'd never met before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And you're a master wind up and I walked in with Danny and he was, he was like uh, oh this is me mate Adam by the way he's a comic he lives with me he was like hey man you're from Liverpool he went why do you love Liverpool so much <laughs> that was the first thing he said to me and I went uh, just, I don't but it's 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 actually really good <laughs> Excuse me, if you ask that to any scouts they don't like it's like being like why do you breathe air and it's just like well but yeah but you're supposed to breathe there like, yeah. <laughs> but John you're not meant to roast people as they come back into their own house like to be fair to young Adam he's like what I've just come home if I know the situation and I don't but uh I'm sure there was a reason like Danny Mac was like ask him about Liverpool there was something like, there would have been a uh, reason that sounds right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, they're like <laughs> yeah 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 the fucking puppet master no, yeah but it exactly. is the greatest city on the planet and there's it not even a close second yeah. not the it greatest is. city on the it planet is. it's not why is new york better for a variety of reasons give me not, three reasons yeah. and i'll beat everyone with a reason of my own no we're not getting into this because no, ah. you can't see no. all right here's a couple of big reasons <laughs> One, if two planes flew into a building in Liverpool- It would bounce off. No, a bunch of cities would be like, it's fucking great actually. <laughs> um, Manchester being one, 
London, every other city in the UK that has Yeah, because to, then they'd have a no, chance of being number stop one. stop interrupting. That's very rude. Another <laughs> Liverpool thing that people from Liverpool do is they oh interrupt God. people all of the time. By the way, everyone, you can if you do not like what I'm saying about Liverpool, you want to hit up my Twitter. It's at Dan Nightingale. Yeah, That's it is. It is. At Dan has a podcast on Twitter. <laughs> Shit. Honestly, yeah. John, it doesn't matter. This is all getting cut out. So say whatever you fucking want. It is not it's getting not. cut out. If it, if it gets cut out, I will, I will call Steve Bennett from Chortle and claim that I was censored on the Have I Got a Word for You podcast. And it'll be the first this. time he fucking mentions us. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys not been mentioned at all? No. I mean, according to Adam's social media, you guys are the biggest podcast in the universe. Pound for Weird. pound. Yeah, Joe Rogan's calling you guys. He wants tips on how to decorate. No, no, he's bigger, but pound for pound. Guys. Like, just what is that? This is enough. This is some Liverpool math right here, which is pound for pound. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, do you know what it means in boxing terms? So, like, Canelo no. couldn't beat the heavyweight champion in boxing, but he's still a better boxer. It's just because he's smaller. No. If everyone was saying the same size, who would be the best? And this is pound for pound number one. Where was number one? Fuck Joe Rogan. He's a nice fella, but fuck him. Fuck that. <laughs> By the way, that is something I will give Liverpool people is they will be like, that guy's a cunt. He's a great guy. <laughs> still a cunt, though. I, I will give Liverpool people that. I'll give Scousers that. You guys are very good at the, like, let me say this about Hitler. He murdered a lot of people, and I don't respect him. Shined his shoes. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair to Liverpool, you know you said about the planes flying into a building. Last week there was a horrific terrorist attack. And, 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 and the, the whole driver city's survived. Gone, the whole city's just gone, you fucking knobheads. Yeah. Like it's it's a, it's amazing to watch a city go. Like so, so many cities in the world be like, we oh. were attacked and the women's hospital was attacked and this is a terror attack. Liverpool's just gone, you soft cunt. I'm gonna Fuck say, off. There is something, I think it's because Britain had so many more terrorist attacks because of the IRA and everything that you, like the entire nation has now reached a like, like a terrorist attack in this country kind of is presented like a train delay at this point. Like it's just, there's always just sort of like, and then some guy said, oh, for fuck's sake, and just stabbed the terrorist with a pen and then went to work. I do like, love those stories. Yeah, like he's just like in Glasgow, wasn't it? Like, wasn't it like an airport worker punched yeah. a man on fire and then was just like, like during the London Bridge attack, one of the terrorists walked into a pub, a guy yelled, I'm Millwall and glassed him. Like, yeah. it's just like, that's the only time I've ever liked Millwall oh, fans. The I'm Millwall, you cunt. You're yeah. deep south now, you fucking cunt. It was Indra yeah. Elba. You naughty little cunt. Yeah. Get on that. But that's, again, this is, again, the thing, the part of Liverpool that they should really is the fact that a guy walked by such a, saw a bunch of, what was it? Saw a bunch of wires in the back of the car and then locked the terrorist <laughs> in the car or something? Yeah, with him. With yeah, him. So yeah, the bomb went off and then he just got out he the got car. got out and walked off. Two stitches. That's all he needed. Wow. Why aren't you accentuating that part of the Scouser story and not just like, ah, but we've got the fucking, a tiger tiger with four floors. We lad. haven't got a tiger tiger because we reject chains. There it is right there. Exactly. <laughs> then it's, that, again, it's not impressive. That we company, support independence, John. The oh company doesn't God. want to invest into this. No, they were refused. They tried to open one and we said, I no, we, wa they? we want local stuff again, like weather spoons. This is again, such a scouser. <laughs> uh, if they all act like there's this collective place you all go under the cavern club <laughs> and kind of like reach. Scousers don't like go to the cavern club. That's a tourist oh thing. And we make God. money off it and we spend it all on bowls. You make no money off of the cavern. No one's cutting you a check <laughs> from the cavern club. Adam Rowe gets 50 pounds scouser free from the tourists. Yeah. So the funny. owner of the cavern club is a patron of this, actually. So technically, we do. Yeah. Can we have a break? Because I need to exhale. Yeah. That was... Any complaints my about my opinions of, of Liverpool? <laughs> you want to hit up? That is... At Dan has a podcast. <laughs> I hate that he knows my Twitter handle. <laughs> yeah. right, just before, I thought you were doing at Dan Nightingale and some poor cunt in Canada is like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's a whirl and why should I drown near it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a little interval. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We interrupt this week's broadcast of the Have A Word podcast to ask you for a favour. Could you do us a favour? Could you drop us a comment? Could you like it if you're watching on YouTube? Could you share all this with your friends? And make sure you're subscribed. And if it's on YouTube, ring the bell too. You'll get notified every time we drop an episode. And that's fantastic for you. And we're on social media as well. So follow us at Have a Word Pod on all good social media platforms. And if you do follow us on social media and you see one of our videos, fucking share it.
A lot of hard work goes into them, and it helps spread the word, and we'd really appreciate it. Nice one. Go ahead. Rat. I don't remember which question it was. <laughs> we, we, tried, we just tried to, like, replicate something that we were talking about in the break, but basically, John looked at Carl's top and was like, oh, I like the 7-Up sponsor. And I... One of my favourite ever Formula 1 cars, just as I was getting into it, was in 92, 91, uh, the Jordan team, which went on to be really successful, their first sponsor was 7-Up, and it was Michael Schumacher's first drive in Formula Wait, 1 back in the day. A guitar player from the band The Scorpions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. drove Formula 1. Yeah, that was his first <laughs> drive, and he went on to win a few world championships for Ferrari, and also <laughs> drum for the Scorpions. And fact, that's a fact. Yeah, his guitar player for the Scorpions, get it wrong. Oh, man. sorry, I'll sorry, I got it wrong. <laughs> yeah. I was stupid. Yeah. You're a fucking idiot sometimes. But, uh, <laughs> I... Um, <laughs> I mean, we're in a real blackout. I got to tell you, I haven't, I, love- I haven't felt a mistake like that since we were rocking like a hurricane. <laughs> All right. See what I did there? You did. Did you do the song titles from this? Oh, okay. Yeah. I famously don't like that. It is on one here. of our, it's one of those crazy nights. Stop it. John, do you like ho- uh, horse racing? Do you like car racing? I don't like how you shoehorned that in, uh, Carl. I was, was that a Scorpion <laughs> song, by the way? Yeah, that was. Do you hum- like horse yeah. r- car racing? <laughs> do, do, do. do you like horse you car like racing? horse racing. I like car <laughs> racing. Why are we married? This song is bad. The Scorpions <laughs> really fell off. <laughs> that, was, that was late stuff. That it's was late. Really that was a grunge hit that was hard. <laughs> uh, and then Dan was talking about, uh, you mentioned Formula One, and I mentioned that I'm not a sports guy. But I like any type of car racing because, and I know this isn't true, but A, I just like that somehow someone's a billionaire from just the thing that goes fast, make it go faster, number one, <laughs> fast goer. And two, it's just driving in a circle. And I feel like any of us, like given a long weekend, could do it. Like, I had trials for Mercedes when I was 17. No, you did it. Oh, hey, sure. Do trials? you want to bang the bell? <laughs> The old pass. trials. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mercedes came down, and you were you were yeah. on the what the local football <laughs> what pitches. Were you and fucking, we were like, yeah, that lad. I bet yeah. he could fucking drive really well. Let me guess. You were st- you were stood you were stood waiting for the bus in your <laughs> beloved Liverpool, probably near that unnecessary Ferris wheel, and uh, and like a car stopped very quickly near like the white line or whatever, and you're like. I would have gotten even closer to the white line and <laughs> outstepped Bernie Eccleson himself and was like, you, my friend, look like a nice distraction so I could bet a Mediterranean gal. Get in the car and do some trials. There's, <laughs> there's a go-kart and track in LCA Oh, Port, fuck yourself. And I broke this all is, their records. No, you did. This isn't and Last got of a- the Starfighter, you <laughs> psychopath. What you are did. you talking about? It's, true. it's there- all true. It is not true, it Carl. Is, John. No, you've been employed <laughs> to be a sycophant. <laughs> I will not sit here while George W. Bush and his Carl Rowe. No, it's true. John, it's true. Is and, it true the, and the guitar player from the Scorpions Go- owned the go-kart yeah, track. And I believe Queen Elizabeth herself dropped the checkered flag. Is that right? <laughs> no, no, she does the canteen. <laughs> Say, oh, it, yeah. it, you it haven't is. lived until you've gotten a slush puppy poured by <laughs> Liz Windsor herself. Queen Elizabeth II. Here's the thing. You should all have a laugh and taking the piss. Oh. This is actually true. Yeah. No, it's genuinely. not. <laughs> genuinely. <laughs> Prove it. I want, Say genuinely. I'm not involved Say in the- genuinely one more <laughs> yeah. fucking time. Yeah, yeah I had trials, but uh, I, I broke my leg, so I couldn't go. <laughs> What you like? Fuck yeah. off. No, in you Germany, didn't. Charles in Germany. Yeah. Oh, no, I broke my leg on a water slide. Oh, in the Taj Mahal. Mahal. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Where were the trials? I don't, yeah. I just, the, they the were meant is, to be in Monaco. What John's doing is going, this is so fucking ridiculous. And I'm so like dead inside to this. I'm like, yeah, where were the trials? Adam? Where were the <laughs> were Mercedes trials? In Monaco. Uh, I mean, Monaco, the Monte Carlo Grand Prix. That was where the trials were. Yeah. For Scouse children. It wasn't during the Grand Prix, but it is that, it is that course. Oh, they just let you drive around Monte yeah. Carlo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, do they? Really? Yeah. Yeah, I have yeah. news for you. I've never been to Monte Carlo. I guarantee if you arrived oh, you at go, Passport right? Control near Monte Carlo, they would fucking turn you around <laughs> like a Nazi trying to walk into a bar mitzvah. <laughs> this place is not for you, lad, is what they would say as you're Blab- shedding back. Yeah, It's what they like to be called, they say in the office. Oh, my days. Adam um, was provisional license at the age of 25, and you believed he drove down Monte Carlo. F1. No, but he did his lessons in Monte need, Carlo. Yeah, you don't need a driver license to be a Formula One driver. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, my God. You yeah. don't? Yeah, it's also true. You know you don't need shoes to be a professional football yeah. player, either. <laughs> you know, if you get points on your license, they still let you race the next race. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. were done speeding. Where? Yeah, yeah. At the Hungarian Grand Prix. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I, like on the wall of the Grand Prix track in. Um, I want you to know the, right the go karting track in Adam, Ellesmere Park. Yeah, Adam, Adam, John, look, John, Adam, don't let, let the bullshit Adam, flow. Adam, look at me. Yeah, I want to put my fist in your face. <laughs> <laughs> I want like ha- like not hard, but like really hard. Just 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 lean into it and just keep my fist on your face while you're still talking about how you, you know, fucking. Sang Socrates at Jacob's <laughs> pillow or whatever other bullshit. It was between you had. me and Lewis Hamilton, and they ended up going for him because I broke my leg. No, yeah. they didn't. <laughs> they didn't do that. That's not what happened. That's not what occurred. Something else occurred. That which needs was to be on were, the soundboard now. Yeah, you were seventeen, and then you and Carl stole a grocery <laughs> cart and ran in a circle, and then Betty, your Betty friend, Betty. who's named Formula One, because he wasn't breastfed, he had formula as a kid or some <laughs> stupid Formula One. Yeah. He's Chinese. Yeah, he's a, yeah, he was, he was yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that kid. He yeah, was yeah, Scouse yeah. Chinese though. Scouse Chinese, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unnecessarily dyed his hair blonde because he wanted to fit in. You know what I'm saying? Formula. <laughs> so this is the thing. I talk a lot of bullshit on this podcast. So when I tell you true stories it's like this, they don't say It's not yeah, always yeah. even on the podcast. You're the yeah. lid that yeah. cried wolf. Yeah. 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 The, what was the, you? because you did, like did part of a math degree and then you claimed something wild like, I can do any equation in my head if I have enough time, which is like, well, that's anyone can do that. No, he did five days of the, no, four days of the introductory week. Yeah, I never went to a single lecture. Went, no. I, like I, I am already there because you said. Like, I feel like it, I may have that. This may have been accidental exaggeration in my head, but you were like, could have done a math degree, but instead I. Well, he got on a math degree in a good university, but he dropped out after yeah, four yeah. days. Have you seen? Go I was, Will, have I you was seen Go Bill Hunting? Yeah, he's the Ben Affleck <laughs> character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Got, Put your fucking burger on layaway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, got yeah. That. It was down to me and Matt Damon, but I broke my leg. <laughs> 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 Adam was doing equations on the wall. Yeah. And someone came in and went, lads, will you just clean the floor? Yeah. Stop drawing just, cocks on the blackboard, yeah, please, That makes sir. no sense. Yeah. You just put, See, the you just thing put, is you what... never walk alone, and then just, <laughs> just clean the, the floor. The math thing is what people, throws people about me, because I know it clashes with everything I say and do, but I was actually, like, unbelievably gifted with mathematics. Yeah, I agree, yes. <laughs> Even Carl. Nine squared is 81. from that line. <laughs> Pow. Yeah, oh. E equals MC squared. How'd you like them apples? Yeah. Um, I know a three cubes. Here's a controversial opinion. I never, I never enjoyed the movie Goodwill Hunting. I've right, off, off you go. You can attack, I couldn't watch it after that. I was rejected. I've yeah. never seen it. It was too, it was too real it. for you. It was too real for I've you. I've seen the clip of it where he's like, it's not your fault, but I don't really get the context. It's about Will Young. Crying. It's about Will Young. Right. What clip's that? Is that, yeah. is that the famous clip? Robin Williams is like, it's not, it's your, not fault. your fault. And he's like, oh no. And he's like, yeah, it's not your fault. And he goes, oh. It's from Mrs. Adam got from that. He's like, <laughs> Adam, Pro- probably his fucking that, fault. The, 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 clip, the clip you're talking about is from Mrs. Doubtfire. You have no idea what you're talking about. No, that's some good Williams. I know, it was a joke. It's a comedy <laughs> podcast, psycho. <laughs> <laughs> Look, no bullshit on this podcast, John. Okay, yeah, exactly. facts. Straight truth, straight facts. What yeah. films don't you like, John? What films don't I like? That everyone else is does. Is there a film like that you detest? That uh, people like Schindler's List. I felt that no. Um, <laughs> thought that was going to get the laugh and the silence. Now is, oh, it hurts. You just uh, got an agreement there. Yeah, Everyone's yeah, like, yeah, 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 I didn't like that. Man was disrespectful, and he had a job to do, and he didn't do it. Um, <laughs> what movie do I not? I don't know. I, I like if you say, give me some. What? what give me. I your, love Goodwill Hunting. I can't believe it got slammed. I really enjoyed that film. I just, I just. I also feel like it launched the career of Casey Affleck, who can't talk properly. And it's done very he well. It's done very well. I also it's, like that uh, Goodwill Hunting is one of the last movies where just a guy has goon friends. Do you know what I'm saying? They, they don't. Yeah, his friend, mates. Yeah, his mates. Like they don't properly represent scumbag friends enough in movies. And as someone who has an absolute thicket of scumbag friends, like I like it when it's like I have. If people come to my hometown and they are doing comedy, and we're gonna go out with my friends from my childhood. <laughs> There is a warning that has to take place of like, hey, we're not, <laughs> I don't agree with most of the stuff they're going to say, but I have known them too long. And so I will just, laugh at it. Yeah. <laughs> they have, Those makes me like, listen, if I met them now, I absolutely. wouldn't listen to the second sentence, but I've known this cunt since I was four. They have friendship tenure. Yeah, 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 there's nothing I can they do. They are, it's some of the, the best. They bit. grandfathered into your friendship. Absolutely. It's yeah. one of the best bits about Good Will Hunting. Ben Affleck plays the fucking, the construction worker and his yeah. two mates and Casey Affleck and how Matt Damon like hel- holds them up. And and it's that beautiful scene when he goes, ah, oh, fuck it, I'm not gonna go get one of these stupid jobs. I'm gonna stay with you and just lay brick. 
Ben Affleck's like, I'd be a fucking disgrace yeah. if you said you're genius, mate. I'm going to be doing this shit till I'm 60. My biggest dream is that one day I come to pick you up for work and you're just gone. You're just gone one of these fucking jobs and you're out of here. And then at the end of the film, when it happens, you're like, I love it. I love that because that's how your thick old best mates, they actually want that for you. They're fucking numbnuts. They get in bar fights with you. But actually they're like, go and do that thing. I completely agree with you. The and then Tom Cruise the takes him to the casino. And that's, and all the yeah, 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 yeah. And they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm an excellent yeah. driver. Yeah. And then you come in and you're the Formula One. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Bernie Eccleston's there going, lad. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, yeah. Goodwill one- bullshitting. Yeah, the one problem, and let me guess, you met Bernie Eccleston when you were 16, you and him, anyway. Uh, the one problem with I have with Goodwill Hunting is your scumbag mates will never say that to you when you need it. It's like 10 years later, they would have been like, you know, I didn't think you should have stayed here laying brick. I thought you should have gone for that job. But yeah, you lay brick though. Right. That's like, Have that's- you got some naughty mates from back in the day in Canada? Oh, fuck yeah. Like I have a friend, my friend uh, Ali Hassan tells the story of him meeting my scumbag friends which was, I've never seen John nervous until we walked into the bar and a woman ran out like crying and screaming. And I was like, oh, they're here. (laughs) (laughs) And like, they're just wild. They're just fucking nutcases. Where are you from in Canada, Johnny? I'm from Ottawa. I'm from the capital. So I'm from a place where it has an industry that never goes away, which is everyone's parents work for the government. Everyone just goes and gets a job with the government or like, any business is secure because a huge amount of the money in that town is coming from something that will always exist, which is government workers. But it has a real small town vibe. Like they had to extend the city limits at some point in the 90s because they realized the population was something like 200 or 300,000. And they were like, this is really embarrassing. We are the capital of a country. (laughs) And so they extended the city limits like a hundred kilometers out so they could get to a million people in the city, but it's just a small town. Like it's wild. And it's got like three drinking districts. What makes it so wild though? If everyone works for the government, that sounds pretty like- they have no responsibility. There's no trying. I do data entry for the Privy Council of the (laughs) Federal Government of Canada. I make 70K a year that will go up slightly with cost of living increases no matter what i do i'm gonna get weird like the ashley matt remember ashley madison.com and they had the hack ashley madison is where you could go cheat yeah, yeah, on, yeah, your- on your wife there was one city that half of the married people in the city were on that website everywhere else it was like 10 percent. ottawa half the married people were on ashley madison.com <laughs> there's a shitload of sex clubs like it's just like really creepy and, and like weird like it sounds like a really good place for a stag do yeah doesn't it uh, you know should what? take finn there for his next birthday it would absolutely be a fucking he might you should he might kiss a girl in ottawa oh no it's hard work no. finger he could finger him from here you he certainly could yeah, <laughs> he's was, got yeah, enormous you, fingers you, yeah you do have tremendous scooping arms look at the oh my god look at those fucking he's things. a goalkeeper i mean you go to scratch your nose and you end up triggering vomiting that's how uh, your fingers are um but yeah ottawa's just a weird fucking place that no one you don't seem like you've got like that rough background though you know it's not rough it's like just crazy it's scumbags it's not it's not a class thing it's a it's a mental mentality you know what i'm saying which is like like let's say what a buddy of mine was with a girl for like almost 10 years i we hadn't seen him for 10 years because she didn't like us and then i was home for christmas one of those and I got told they broke up the last week. And I was like, they did? And then all I saw was him literally take a wild drunken swing at one, like literally they're like down the road. I just see him take a wild drunken swing at a bouncer, fall into the snowbank. The bouncer like shakes his head and walks away. And I was like, what is this? And then my other friend comes like running, sees him in the snowbank, sees me, waves, runs over and goes, yeah. He thought he was going to have a threesome with two girls, but that's because he's really drunk and doesn't can't figure out what a waitress is. <laughs> and so tried to fight those bouncers. And it was just like, that's the sort of stuff we're talking about. You know what I mean? Kind of people that you think they're microdosing on mushrooms, but no, they're just doing mushrooms at work. <laughs> like, you know, there's, yeah. The kind yeah. Of, here's the problem with England is all of you guys keep your scumbag behavior. You all do it exclusively internationally. Like no English, no one behaves worse than a stag do in Amsterdam. That like a stag do in Liverpool is like at a ten, 
in terms of scumbag. Stag do in the liver in Amsterdam, it's at a hundred in terms of scumbag. You know what I'm saying? I have saying? to say, I don't ever love seeing a stag do in a comedy club or on the street. No, 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 no. But if I'm abroad and I see a it's, UK stag do, I'm like, not today. Yeah. I'm not in the mood for it. This is the thing yeah. is, yeah, because in a comedy club in the UK, you go, okay, we have security. There's some rules. They probably live close enough to this community. At some point, shame will kick in. You see a bunch of lads from Runcorn in Brussels. Watch the fuck out. They do not <laughs> like that city, and they are here to destroy it because Barry is marrying <coughs> Teresa. They're all going to... You make some phenomenal links. Runcorn to Brussels, Blythe to Mexico. These are so amazing. I want to point out, like... you made the Mexico to Blythe connection. I, right, just right. I just rode that pony all, all right, the way right. to the stable. But don't act. <laughs> like, if you guys were doing those weird gigs in Belgium where you stay in that guy's mom's house and you see all of his racist books and gollywogs on the shelves, if you're walking down the street and see just a bunch of lads from Manchester coming to the gig on a stag do, you're 10 times worried than if you saw a bunch of lads on a stag do walking into the frog and bucket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, no, yeah. right. We've got to have a word that's linked to someone's shit house mate. So I feel like it's a good time to link from what we were talking about into a have a word. So we're trying to f fix problems. Okay. You, people use it as just a way to slag off the mates a lot of the time. Yeah. Uh, this one's from Lee and he says, now, Liam, this was now then lids. Can you have a proper fucking word with our mate Tom? He is the flakiest cunt about, late for everything, pulls out of nights out with a few days' notice, liability if you have ever to put a deposit down for something, and his excuses are fucking unreal. Everything from grandparents dying, which is sus because I can count at least six occasions he's floated this as a reason for his shyness, to his missus's menstrual cycle. How the fuck does that affect him? Buy some maxi pads, find your balls, and book a taxi. I know he listens to this, so please let him have it. We love the cunt, but he's a big bullshit in letdown, and he needs to hear it. Nice one, Liam. All right, already this is clearly this is uh, Tom. Clearly sounds like someone who's got his shit together. He's got a missus and a job, and this guy sounds like he's the scumbag mate reacting to his friend being like, "Hey, why don't you come hang out? We we just found a bunch of old cars in a park that we're gonna set on fire." <laughs> Why don't you come down and hang out? And he's just like, uh, no, uh, my wa my girlfriend's on her period. I don't want to do that. And they were like, yeah, this fucking pussy doesn't know how to do <laughs> You know live. what? I, I love it how you've literally read this the complete opposite way to how I read it. I was like, oh, yeah, he does sound shit. And you're like, listen, his grandparents died. You've just lost count. All four of them have died and you didn't care. Yeah, they, you're like, you've, you've used this excuse six times. Yeah. He, and he's probably saying that at the funeral, like fucking <laughs> Grandma Gertie's just there and that like weird, like, I don't know if you guys ever been to like an open casket funeral. No, we don't, I don't, we don't really have them over here, do we? Open casket? It's an Irish thing, isn't it? Oh, is it? Yeah. It's an Irish thing. It right, depends right. on how maimed they are as well. Yeah. Right. Like level. if they were torn apart by like a bear, you can't have an open Back casket. Yeah, up. that doesn't happen in Liverpool a lot. Yeah, you know? how many of your How did Nana go? Grizzly. Yeah, how many of your grandparents did you lose to a bear attack? Third. I can't remember. Yeah, at least six. <laughs> he, was, he was away doing trials for Mercedes. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> he lost the lost. I mean, Bernie eight. Eccleston yeah. were doing cocaine up of Vladimir Putin's dick at the I time. I don't do performance and answer drugs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah, and he's and he's like he's bitching about his missus menstrual cycle. The guy's like, I just love her and yeah. he's having a hard time. It's also I do like when people are like, oh, he was complaining about his like wife's menstrual cycle. It's like, well, sometimes that can actually be pretty brutal, especially if you're living with the person. You're like, actually, yeah, let me get you some time. Uh, and I'll help mate, you out. I'd, honestly, I love my wife, but the day I cancel a night out because she's having is this a public episode, <laughs> it is. You're right. You're right, John. Yeah, I want you all to know that Dan has written something on a sheet that he's showed. I, I, goes against that. I tried to sort of start preempting this. You know, when you know it's coming, you're like, oh, I've seen the mood change there. It's definitely the the thingy. And I've been like, what oh, are you, what are you, a dad from a 90s sitcom? The, I see your mood change and then the thingy. What is this code? <laughs> what is this? Blood. This uh, is blood. <laughs> You put, you forced him into that corner. <laughs> that, he was always going to come got, out swinging. I got I, I to gotta tell you something, Dan. I genuinely wanted to know what I... Uh, like, th this is blood? Yeah. It's I thought you were, like, you were trying to like demonstrate like a piece of paper that would be placed between you and the... No, no, no. It's the blood coming out of the... Oh, my God. No. Out <laughs> of where? Cha -cha. Let's see if he knows. Uh, 
The pussy. Oh, oh guys. Oh, the pussy said by Carl. <laughs> Cannot <laughs> talk about the menstrual cycle with the word pussy. Yeah. Oh, just... she's having a nightmare. Yeah, she's on a period from a pussy. <laughs> yeah. All checks out. Um, I have to I'm say not... though, the flakiness is annoying. So what you're saying is no, but I, I this think... Tom guy seems like he's like, oh man, my grandparents were real, but like. I, yeah, I, it back. is it is annoying when you've organised something and one on. cunt is always a nightmare to be like, could you just be there at that time? But could you pay the deposit because you're meant to be going on this thing with us? But now it's up thing. to him to just fuck him off. Yeah. He tells that off. thing of you fuck him off. Also, he going he cancels plans like days before. That's when you cancel plans. Sometimes like it always drives me crazy when it's like you can't because I people are like you cancel plans a lot and I go yeah three days before well within cancelable. What's the what's the what's the line of acceptability on that one? I, I like to twenty four hours. Oof. Oof. That's that's too close. That. A stag do. Stag you can't do, cancel no. the stag do. Not a stag no, do. It, it depends on no, how I many people know. are going. If it's just you and someone else, I think that's a shit stag do. Yeah, it's a yeah, shit. But like two <laughs> days before, imagine you just that, see you, you're well past it. But like if there's like, if it's a big group event. And you need to cancel it if, like the day of. If you know everyone else is still going and yeah. the day is not going to be ruined okay. by you not going, fine. And also, you're not taking your money out then, are you? You've paid for everything in theory. Yeah. So yeah. see, that's when people this do that. This cunt just needs to be not invited to stuff anymore. I th and guess what? I think Tom would be fine with that. I think yeah. he'd be like, yeah, I'm try I've been trying to get rid of these fucking animals <laughs> for years. Tom's dying to be cut off. Yeah, he just wants to be. He just wants to stay home with his heavily menstrual misses. Yeah, ha he's happy. I, I think he's trying I to bet settle you down. He has never mentioned his girlfriend's period once. It's just this whack job. It's just like you know, I doesn't even want to come. He's always talking about his girlfriend's pussy and his bleeding dead. and, and his, his dead relatives. Yeah, and his, and his relatives keep dying. He's like probably not mentioning like all of his gr his grand uh, this guy Tom's grandparents all died in a murder suicide on Christmas. <laughs> this Liam guy does seem pretty. He's like oh, he's always constantly. Nice, you know, because he's like in chemo. Also, I don't want to um, be, I don't want to, yeah, be too critical of your podcast, but also to, to go after a friend like this using the medium of a podcast is possibly the most passive no, aggressive thing. No, yeah. This is what we're not allowed to do, John. Why? You can't criticize the process because the process is the fucking podcast. Well, I was, so, <laughs> Dan, I you was are told one of many guests that come on and go, do you know what? Actually, I think this whole email is bullshit. And you're like, don't, don't think I that. Was, excuse <laughs> me. Have a word pod at gmail.com. Excuse, excuse me. I was told many times by Adam in a variety of emails that the only rule is there are no rules. I messaged him once. Yeah. Say enough, I, by the way. I don't care. The <laughs> idea, when you wrote that, I went, are you, I want to, oh, Adam wrote, the only rule is no rules. What has happened? I just said the rule is there's no rules. That's, the, that's yeah. literally yeah. what we do. Because people like turn up and they're like, whoa, ho, ho, ho. was that a, a, an accent from someone who isn't white in my head? Oh, well, I'm not doing that on this podcast. Yeah, but it. you were doing that accent when the mics were not on. And I felt <laughs> that the bone you put in your nose was a little inappropriate. Do you know? <laughs> Patreon.com slash have a way podcast. <laughs> yeah. John Hasten's accent have no color in my mind because I yeah, can't they are not. It. They're not a, a, a place Ooh, that exists. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jordan. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that guy sounded like he was from Fife. <laughs> um, uh, this is from Anonymous. All right, lids. Just want to say, I'm addicted to the pod, and the patron is the fucking best. The last dance was unreal. I watched a bit of it actually, and it is it's great. I don't know why I hadn't watched it until it was already out. I fucking loved it. Check it out on Patreon. Uh, anyway, think you might need to have a word with me, or maybe this lady that I'm seeing. We're not official. She doesn't seem keen on a proper all-in relationship, but we've been banging. And he's put in brackets like... Legend. Like good banging as well for two months. She's an absolute stunner, very confident, very sexy. May even be seeing other guys, fuck knows, not asked. But she's mentioned us going as a couple to a sex party and fetish night. And if I'm honest, it sounds kinky as fuck and a bit much for my liking. Am I being a pussy... Or should she go and get spanked by strangers and leave me out of it? I'm sure you'll give me the best, most caring advice. Uh, that's from Anonymous. Well, go if you want to go and don't... She's not your girlfriend, so you can't be like, eh, don't like you going to sex parties because she's made it clear she doesn't want a relationship I because don't, I don't think she wants bothered. to go and get bummed at a party. Yeah. And that's it. That's her prerogative. Oh, he, he's not showing any jealousy. Yeah. He's like, she, she should go and get spanked by strangers. That's fine. I don't think he's... I think he's sort of like... I don't know if I want to. It's one Go. of those. Here, well, here's the question <laughs> for everyone in the room. Who, because there's a real leap from I would like to go to a sex party and then someone going, 
we can make this happen. You are invited. So let's go around the room. Who here has been invited to a sex party? No. Nope. I mean, with that goatee, I'm surprised. Uh, Dan? <laughs> goatee. Have you been invited to Yeah. 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 Did you attend? No. Because, no. Why? Because the I was seeing a girl, mm -hmm. uh, not exclusively, and I didn't even like her that much. And she was like, I think we should go to sex parties. And in my head, I was like, I think we should stop having sex. So I just was like, this. it felt like a continuation of something that I wasn't that bothered about. If she'd have been stunning and I'd have been into it, and I'd have been in there like, oh, I just want to do anything to keep you around. Then maybe I'd have been like, fuck, I just need to, I wanted to be attached. But it was so easy for me to be like, nah, I'm not really into that. Have you been invited? I have. Have you, have you been to one? I have not. I have a, the best reason for not going, by the way, is very stupid. John hasn't got a dick. It fell off when he was it eight. Wasn't, that's not the only reason. They, <laughs> they, they welcome people of all prescriptions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see a Jaya Joe. Oh, here he is. Yeah, so, Hi, John. Um, I, I have not been invited uh, I have invited people, but no one showed up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Adam hosted a sex party. Nobody showed up. Mm, Brutal. Yeah. So why? Uh, I got invited by a girl, and I had a... Uh, I was fucking broke at the time, and I had a gig at the downstairs at the King's Head. And they're like, it starts at 8. You have to get there right at 8. And I was like, I got a gig. It's a Friday night. I'll be there around nine o'clock and she was just like no you have to be there on time because it all starts like on a rhythm yeah they do captains yeah you but know, like you still yeah. have <laughs> ib dib do yeah. yeah. that's got flu all Dogs numbers chicken do numbers as well same round and we'll get to number <laughs> five seven and nine bomb me now right it's like squid game with your dick out <laughs> yeah right cool and if you show up late like people have already like paired off and started having sex oh, and so you're and i was yeah. like Right there, I went like, oh, this isn't like the fun, passionate wackiness I was expecting. This sounds a lot more fucking regimented and unfun. Yeah. I No, thank you. Yeah, Linda, you're with Jeff and, Jeff and Keith. Get yeah. in the corner. Yeah, that doesn't sound fun. Yeah. You want eyes wide shut, sort of. Yeah, and the bit that I've never what? been I, yeah, <laughs> Linda, Jeff, and Keith. Those yeah, are yeah. definite sex party names. I got news for you. Based on the person that invited me, it's not like. Who, did you, who invited you? It was a girl I was seeing who was like a ludicrously like a like a posh southern English woman to the power of a billion. Like you're just oh, like, she wow. sounds great. She's a, a very nice person. Oh, John, please take me there's to a, a sex there's party. A, there's a funny thing that happened that I will tell you off podcast. No, John, yeah, tell not, us it on podcast. Not gonna happen. Do you think oh, it was ludicrous? It's yeah, definite. Yeah. Yeah. Adam, do you think I ludicrous? Thought, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How you ain't going to fuck, bitch? I'm me. I'm the goddamn reason you in VIP. Boom, bitch. Say. Get out the way. You Just say. get out the way. She was a ludicrous tribute act. <laughs> Watch out for my medallions. My dad is a reckless. Ooh, get out of the way. Get out uh, of the way. I, I yeah. love the idea that a posh Southern Tory benefactor daughter fancied you. I was like, oh my God, I've got a bit of rough. Oh, yeah. From the colonies. I mean, uh, posh ladies do very much, because I am way less of a commitment than the other types of people that would really make their fathers angry. So, like, I'm, yeah, I'm like see, the, st I'm the starter kit of yeah. that. You know what I mean? Like, he's foreign, but it's Canada. Like, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's not full ludicrous forward. <laughs> exactly right. It's not like he's from Liverpool or whatever. Like, oh, do yeah. you understand? Atlanta. Exactly. Oh, Atlanta. Oh, my God. Imagine. <laughs> um, right. Wow. And so she, can you go on your own? I suppose you can if you're a girl. You can go. But you no, would have gone. I would have, but I guarantee I would have, I would have hung out in the kitchen for a little while. Like I do at all house parties and then left way early going, I fucking don't like those people. That's what it would have been. It's interesting as well. Like you can't, you can't double opening the king's head and then closing a sex party. I know. That's the shit. Yeah. It's what, what I didn't realize it was like the fucking store. <laughs> <laughs> the timings just don't work out. <laughs> I've just rushed over. I've had a double. Yeah, yeah, because they're all. That, you don't want to walk in when they're all doing anal. That's, exactly, yeah. or anything. You know what I mean? I yeah. don't know. It was one of the. I do go like. I wonder what it would have been like. Is it? But it would have been kind of. I have a feeling, having never engaged in group sex situations, that it's one of those things where it's like this is a really good story to tell, but in the moment, this is just a lot of effort and concentration. See, it's weird to me. I don't know what it's actually like, but in my head, a sex party like. 
I don't know whether it's in, they're all in separate rooms, but in my head, do you know, like, when the bully in a high school film goes to, like, a frat party to find the cheerleader and there's just people everywhere. In my head, a sex party is that, but they're just bumming all over the house. Yeah. Oh. Why do you think that they're only exclusively doing butt stuff? I've got to point this out. Like the, if you're going to a sex party and you're just wasting time with normal sex, I mean, you might as well just be in. I mean, but you have to understand the act of going to the sex party has elevated, so doing missionary at a sex party, that's pretty fucking crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like or- you just think there's bodies everywhere. It's just like, and they're a- only doing anal sex because they really need to up. Yeah, just cough more in the. No, there'll probably be some Sorry. face fucking <laughs> as well. But like, enjoy. No, yeah, like, if you say face fucking, yeah. yeah. Bit, I just, I just imagine it's like pretty wild, like a tin of maggots when you go fishing. Just everyone like writhing and wriggling. Yeah, just think like it's everywhere. Why did you Where go really, with it's probably that just- metaphor? Hang on, that you don't like, know whether there's a cock in your visuals. ass or an elbow. You just don't know. Welcome to have a word where occasionally our metaphors are unnecessarily <laughs> horrific. Oh, just the maggot. Can I just remind you of blood? <laughs> the no. maggot tip from a pussy. He started it. Uh, yeah, both of you. Yeah. My <laughs> maggot analogy was qu- visually on on point. I mean, it was, but also, <laughs> I I just Yuck. think when when people do the group sex thing. You know, as a veteran of the game, I've had one experience, and it's just because we all got drunk, and it was the end of the night. And you're like, "Oh, what do we do?" And then all of a sudden, it's happened. It's not like uh, I'll get there about half seven, and we'll have uh, like we'll start for quarter to eight. This is the problem. This is the that's when it's all a bit. But this is the problem with like our generation. How old are you, Adam? Twenty nine. You're no. I am. You're twenty (laughs) nine. I need to see some ID. <laughs> <laughs> you you going up or down? Yeah. Think he's old? Did you think he was older? I would have put you at around 33, 34. Yeah, 29. 30 in January. I don't believe you. I show me your driver's license right now. How old do you think he is? How old do I think he I is? I wallet over there. You throw me. How old do you think Finn is? Absolutely no idea. He's a child. Finn, how old are you? 23. What is going on here? His fingers. Oh, good. Now 29. I have to do math. 92. What in the name of God? You're 29 years old, Adam? Why is, what's wrong with that? You just, you seem more mature than that. Fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> Blood. <laughs> yeah, when I was 17, I was driving a Mercedes. Uh, <laughs> you were a distinguished gentleman. I can't believe you just got ID'd on your own podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if you noticed, he took he that ID. It, yeah. Yeah, he's John, John, John Hastings, have you heard Adam Rowe's been signed up for Al-Qaeda? Yeah. <laughs> John Hastings does That's not all it takes, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone, someone <laughs> robs your driver's yeah. license. Yeah. And so then you just get it picked up in yeah. a van on one the day. Al-Qaeda website. Come on, lads. What's your driving license number, please, lads? Yeah. The circuit isn't what it used to be. I, I, I've started identity thieving. I, I stole Al Berry's identity, and now I'm just, you know... <laughs> I don't know why he went with him. It's just such a niche inside. Yeah, a lot of people steal comedians' jokes rather than their driving licenses. I go a different way. You can have the jokes. I'm going for their. F- I'm going for their bank. <laughs> John Hastings <laughs> turns up at a gig. Adam Rose gig. Like, hi, I'm Adam Rose. You definitely not. I am. That's my. Yeah. Uh, you know yeah, that I'm scene not. in uh, in Fight Club where Brad Pitt holds a gun into that guy's face so that he'll follow his dream. I'm kind of doing that with Adam. After the gig, I'm going to hold a gun to his head and just be like, "Fucking stop wearing leather jackets on stage. You come across like a." arms dealer from a spy movie <laughs> and I'm keeping your idea. Right, John, you if you think it. Adam's 33, how old do you think Dan is? I think Dan is my age. I think How Dan, old are you? I'm 36. I think Dan is 36. I'm 40. Congratulations, Dan. You've done a great job. Uh, <laughs> like, well, this worked out really well for me. You didn't, uh, yeah. Pretty well for it. Well, you look really fresh. But fuck off, Adam. I'm taking this. I'm yeah. burning it. Are you really 40? Here's what I'm going to say it is right there. Is it's it's purely face construction. <laughs> in that your face looks more open, so I just assume you're my age. Well, Adam, you got too many angles and stuff like that. Also, <laughs> one eyebrow is much bushier than the other one, and that's something that someone in their thirties does. That's not a twenty year old. Oh, face. it's usually me that does the eyebrows. That's stuff. Sam's shop, though, isn't it? So she needs to get on that. Oh god! Wait a minute, what? Someone did that intentionally? No, it's just my eyebrows are like uh, fire hazards and they just grow at their own leisure. <laughs> and uh, my girlfriend occasionally just pins me to a bed and plucks them for me. That yeah. sounds pretty hot. Um, yeah. I've seen that at a sex party. Yeah. Here's <laughs> yes. my question. Do you occasionally just get one crazy long eyebrow? Like just one. One hair. Just yeah. like one. Yeah, I've started that. I've yeah, started yeah, yeah. that. The mad professor one where you're like, oh, yeah. that's not good. Yeah, just aging, Adam, you'll learn, as you evidently are not even 30 yet. How is that fucking possible? <laughs> it's insane. I wonder what, what vehicles are you qualified to do? Just, oh, interesting. Just, F1 cars? Just, just F1 cars, yeah. 
from before. Um, I can <laughs> legally drive. I can't do 18 ton, but I can do all cars, all vans, buses, and helicopters. That's what she said, mate. I don't know what that means. 18 ton. Um, I don't think you can do 18 ton here. <laughs> Did anyone else miss helicopters? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can't do 18 ton, can't do helicopters. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> only if the Mercedes. Yeah. I, mean, I can do helicopters as long as I'm accompanied by a, a qualified helicopter driver and I don't true. drive it. That's true of anybody. <laughs> you can be in a helicopter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what you're saying is if you pay the fee to be on the helicopter, you're allowed to be on the helicopter? Yeah, yeah I've got me helicopters, yeah. passenger license. Yeah. So what you're saying is- You know you those little s- kid controls that they do? Yeah. They sort of glue stick it onto the window and Adam's like, <laughs> Captain Adam. Yeah. So what you're saying is- when you watch an episode of Succession and they get up in the helicopters, in your head, you're like, I could be Shiv. I don't know what Succession is, but in Paw Patrol. You don't yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you know Paw Patrol? Why uh, he's a pedophile. Uh, <laughs> he's Can we give this guy closure on the sex pies? Do you not think he should just go? Go and with her. A... Carl, you'd go. Yeah. Why not? What do you... if no one's ever gone to a sex just party leave. and been disappointed. Yeah. That is not true at <laughs> all. You, so yeah. yeah, I mean, you could go and just do be you like, understand okay, how many married people have gone to a sex party, both of them thinking this is going to help the relationship, and one of them being like, I like this, and the other one is like, I don't like this, but oh. the person I came here definitely well, does. at the very oh, least, he'll get to have like guy. a wank in a cupboard, and he'll come, and he'll end the night having come. <laughs> That, how and that's always a bad night. What, what a bad end to the night. What, what a terrible. terrible. <laughs> how was the sex party? I had a wank in the cupboard by myself. <laughs> and my while wife my... Carol got gang banged <laughs> yeah. in the pantry. Yeah, well, my friends with benefits <laughs> got fucking pussy. rimmed on the steps. <laughs> like, yeah, but like, that's sad. Wank. Any comes a come, innit? No, what not any comes a come. I got as I've I've jizzed in a botanical garden and I've jizzed in a hotel room and those are two vastly different experiences. Which one was better? The hotel room. The <laughs> botanical garden was very cold and it was done to when a truth or dare. Were you watering plants? Sorry. What was Whoa, what, watering you? plants? <laughs> Feed me. <laughs> what? Why did you have a wank in a botanical I'll garden? I'll tell you very quickly. I, we were fourteen years old and one of our friends ate a bad pizza, and they were in a uh, in the uh, in a park. And he farted so badly, someone else thought he had taken a shit. And so they thought, oh, is what we're doing now just taking shits? These are, by the way, the same scumbag friends. Are we just taking shits outside now? So a friend then, to one up him, took a shit outside. and was like, that was a fart. thus creating a chain reaction of who can do a grosser, weirder bodily function thing outside. People are trying to piss on people. One guy tried to throw up on someone else's shit. And then in the middle of a very cold Canadian winter when it was minus 45, I said, to end things, I'll go jack off in a botanical garden to win this. And so at minus 45 degrees at like 13 years old, jizzed on that fucking wall. And that's how you end up. A headliner. Yeah, right there. That's right. <laughs> you yeah. bring headliner God mentality. Right. <laughs> yeah. You guys want to be able to close fucking <laughs> the bear cat on a Saturday. for It was supposed to be 150 but we'll give you 125 cash because that's the same. You have to have jacked off in a botanical garden. No right, thing. let's Nothing. just wrap this up. Where can we see you? you know, figuratively wanking a botanical garden by headlining comedy clubs, John. You can uh, go to my Instagram at the John Hastings. You can check out uh, either of my podcasts, The Wrestler Review, which is all about wrestling, at The Wrestler Review, or uh, Untitled Twitch Stream, which is a Twitch stream and podcast I do five days a week, at Untitled Twitch on Twitter, untitled www.twitch.tv backslash Untitled Twitch Stream. Uh, subscribe to all of that sort of stuff. We have a Patreon that's not as successful as Have a Word Boy, who's until <laughs> now. Lots of people's. Uh, Tim Dillon's is more successful. Yeah, uh, but pound for pound. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's like okay. It. That's okay. <laughs> oh, my God. It's <laughs> Hold on, on me. Oh, my God. I'm from Blythe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my name is Canelo Alvarez. Yeah. I am from Northumbria. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Pound for pound, baby. Jeez. Yeah. How are they, lads? What I like is. Oh, that- I oh no. We got a successful <laughs> no, 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 Oh, no, my no. God. <laughs> oh, my God. It's my wife's vagina again. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs>
know. What are you gonna do? It's one of the biggest in the UK on the planet. Pound for pound, that's okay. Pound for Come pound. see me. I want to know who taught you guys the phrase pound for pound. They need to be pound. I watched boxing four or five times, and I. <laughs> Pound for pound. No, hey, we've got a Christmas single coming out soon. Uh, extra episodes, patreon.com slash pod, including early access to these public ones. Yes. There's loads of specials on there as well. Yes. And you can get merch, including Christmas jumpers, at havewaypod.com. Fuck off. Can I yes. plug one more thing? Yeah. No. Uh, I have a bunch of albums on wherever you stream anything. Go get them. Just look under John Hastings. Check out my podcast. Thank you. And keep he also got a, a, a very, very old comedian, special man. from uh, Canadian TV that I love. Oh, I have a, yeah, a bunch of them. Yeah, there's my comedy now. Yeah, that's the one. Um, I have painted in eyebrows in that one. That's fun. And then I have my 2019 Edinburgh show uh, is also on YouTube for free. So go watch that or listen to all my stuff. An unbelievable comic. No one has stuff. ever done a bigger sell of themselves. Everyone's like, uh, I've got Twitter, I think. It's because I live in, a, if, once you live in America, they... Because the thing that English people pretend they're like, I don't know. And it's like, no, we're all good at this. We all have done it for a living for, you know, yes. Dan, 27 years, Adam. Four, pound for pound. Pound, <laughs> pound for pound. You don't know. I wank in your garden. Yeah, please. Anytime. Yes.